Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, just so I, I, of course, screwed up my my beginning there a little bit. The um, welcome, welcome. We are here in D.C. I'm still trying to figure out my my setup here. Um, I have this little alcove here in in my house that has the least echo that that uh, of places and i don't know i'm trying to i i still need to do various things like the the background here is not very interesting i don't have any funko pops or anything like that um in fact i need to get my glue gun back because so what's going on here is one, one of the rough things about um recording is you, so you, you get usually get these uh these foam things in order to um make it so you don't echo so much and then but the thing is they don't really stick to the wall because they're kind of sponge like so you, you get these 3m like things but then they fall off when it's like humid and so you kind of glue gun them back on but um yeah i'm trying to trying to have something i don't know i don't know here we are in dc but it just looks like i'm in a i'm in a cave um and so uh <laughs> um but let's see where uh, carmine said he'd be joining me in a second and um but other than that uh let's go through here before we get on to the trailer i know everybody wants to talk about the trailer um agro mocagro Ag good name agro agro mocagro mocrago agro agro mocrago that's a tongue twister. Agro mocrego. Agro mocre ego mocrego. Ego mocrego. Agro lego my ego. Lego mo ego. Um uh welcome back to the Freedom Land. Yeah, you know, it all depends on how you define freedom. Like um nice thing about Taiwan is like, you know super safe you can do anything you want and that's in that sense you can leave your wallet on a table and you like come back it, it, like hours later and it's still there so i mean in that sense you know so i don't know freedom freedom's got weird definitions to we americans um you know when when people start like talking about their guns and stuff and i'm like uh is that freedom is that freedom um but anyway but you know i've had some mexican food since I've been back. So, you know, America's, America's not all bad. America's not all bad. Um, thank you, wisdom. Thank you, wisdom. Um, PJ, you're a terrible father. You made your son wait more than 10 minutes last video. Laughing my ass off. I can't wait for Chad, Brandon, and Sweet Robin to do a trailer breakdown, praying for your vocal cords. Um, we'll see about the teaser. I, I don't know if they're going to do it for the, the teaser because this was just the teaser trailer that came out. Um, but maybe, maybe they'll, maybe they'll make an appearance for the, uh, for the, for the full, for the full trailer when it's here. Um, you know, everything's, or everything's always kind of dependent upon, uh, when it comes out and how much time I have. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll see. I would, I, you know, I do, I do love them so much. It's just how much, how much work, how much work goes into, uh, to, into that. Um, but I will give it. A, I will give it a shot. Also, like you know, if I'm in the mood to have like, if there's good jokes, if there's good jokes. <sighs> so if somebody made some good jokes about blood and cheese. They said that's the uh, they're, they're lactose intolerant, so blood and cheese was their was their weekend. Um, new intro. I did a little bit, a little, little bit. Um, but. Uh, Let's see. I'm sure Preston will have Winds of Winter finished in 10 years. Definitely in 10. Definitely in 10. Yeah, here it is. Blood and Cheese was my week was my weekend. Um, all right, let's get to the uh let's get to the trailer in a second. Car Carmine said he was gonna was gonna join me at the beginning, but he's probably eating a calzone. Um <laughs> time for mambo sauce. For those that don't know, DC, there's there's not much to like DC culture and DC cuisine, but one of the few things is there's uh, something we call a half smoke in DC, which is um, it's kind of like a cross between a sausage and a hot dog. It's kind of weird. Um, 
half smokes are like a thing. And then there's then there's this sauce called mambo sauce or mumbo sauce. Sometimes people call it. And like if you're real DC native, you put it on everything. You put it on your fried chickens. You put it on your your, your, your French fries. You, you throw it on everything. So it's like as DC as you can be. It's uh, is, is, is mambo sauce. Um, but DC for the most part doesn't have uh, like too much. You know, it, 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 when it comes, it's not like, you know, a place like Baltimore. All right. Um, let's see here. All right. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this trailer. Now, keep in mind, I've, I've, I've put a, I've put it a little angle here just because uh, I want to make sure that I'm not having any, any, um, Any uh, I don't want to have any copyright claims on on anything. So Carmine sent me a special trailer that he says is free from getting from getting uh, flagged, and I'm also putting it at an angle, and it's without music, and I'm stopping it. So I think I think I'm gonna be free from anything like that. So anyway, this fucking trailer, um, I, you know, I talked about it with Carmine on his stream. Carmine streamed for the first time uh, uh, a few, uh, was yesterday. So we're, we're going to look at this. Okay. So, um, uh, so we begin with Rhaenyra looking out at Storm's End. Um, and by the way, when, when when people saw this this uh this scene, did anyone think of like So there's not that you know, you being being in this a, a while, like I know all of the different fan art and the, all the different like professional art for like Storm's End, right? So this is like one of the more famous like Storm's End pictures that was that that's produced and so you know granted you know it's whatever looking up the coast but still it's like it's very reminiscent here you know this look here um and, it, and it's mainly just because like when you actually like read the, the the description of storm's end in the books it's you know it talks about like the drum tower being a fist and this like oval shaped like like walls and everything. And so when I see things, when I see something that's not like the books, but more like this art, I'm like, they, they, it looks like they, they, they took this as the example, which I'm not saying that this is a, a horrible picture. It's not exactly how I would portray Storm's End because because one, like the, the, the walls are squarish and things like that. And it's not, it's not, that much like a fist and i think there's i guess there's battlements at the top but it's i don't know it's not um not exactly how how i i saw it in the uh in the um i'm gonna go down just so people yeah and and, and in the storm's end I, you know does it look like a a, a nuclear to cooling tower or whatever a hydroelectric plant or whatever um but anyway, so we kind of know that uh, from leaks and stuff for a while that there there's going to be a scene at the beginning where Rhaenyra is going to be looking for um, Jace. And at some point, the leaks don't really say if she finds Jace's body or not Jace, Luke, the, the if they're if she finds Luke's body or or um, um, what is it, Arax. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, but we know that this scene was going to happen. So, so her being here at Storm's End is not really too much of a surprise. Um, we kind of knew that this scene was coming from, from like leak reports. Um, then we get, you know, the, the story, then we get this scene of, of Aegon. He's got this like huge freaking crown on, um, which is, uh, um, by the way, the uh 
I want to talk about Now the crown of Aegon, wasn't it supposed to be a circlet of Valyrian steel? Um, you know, I, I, I want to say, though I, you know, it's a so. I think it's just from George R. R. Martin said it at one point. I'm not sure it's a, if it's a, if it's actually like, um, but that's a lot of Valyrian steel uh, to be in that crown. Um, but, uh, whatever the case, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it's not Valyrian steel in the, in the, in the show, but that's a lot. That's a lot in there. Um, huh. In the book, the drum tower is barely peeking out over the, uh, enormous walls of Storm's End in the show. It's a, it's a giant cock. Uh, I think the idea and, and I'm, and I'm being completely like serious here is I think think like um either storm's end is supposed to be like peeking out of an uncircumcised like dick or if it's it's supposed to be like clitoral hood kind of thing like george is always doing shit like that so the idea that it's just like that it's like just peeking out you know what i'm saying but whatever but in the show it's a, it's more of a circumcised dick you know like sh- like you know coming out like a fist but that's just uh i i'm not skipping super chats i'm just uh i'm going back but um i'm going back don't worry i'm just uh let's see here but you know i there there's like a live talk at the same time as as other stuff so um some boats here we can't really see what's going on from far Let's get in here. Kristen Cole, everyone's been talking about Kristen Cole here. Um, he has his hand necklace on. So the idea is that um, after kind of things go bad in the in the Riverlands at the beginning of the war, Otto is relieved as hand and uh, Kristen Cole is made is made hand. And he's of course considered one of the worst, the worst hands to ever to ever be. Um and he seems to be executing someone. Now, if you remember, I made a whole bunch of jokes um, first season that that about Lord Coswell losing his head. And this kind of gets into the same thing, even though they hung Lord Coswell at the end of last season. This gets into, like, at the beginning of the war, a bunch of houses are... are uh, um, are faithful to Rhaenyra, and then he they he they kind of capture the houses and the, and the lords and ladies, and half of them, um, half of them, like go over, uh, like Rosby and Stokeworth, and half of them don't, and so the ones that don't get beheaded, and though like, Caswell was like famously one that like didn't go over, and so, you know, in this situation, like it's probably something like that this, but. It's odd that he, he seems this looks like some play like I mean it reminds us of Driftmark, but why would they be on Driftmark? But um but nonetheless, like, you know, somebody's getting executed here. Probably some, you know. Um you know. The um I'm very surprised actually looking at the trailer how closely they're they're following fire and blood and we'll get i'll get to that in a second i mean there's a few things that are different but a lot of stuff is like very very close to fire and blood anyway then we have this like uh the ball like going like swirling around like getting flushed down the toilet kind of thing here whatever and then um i don't know whose ball it is but then we have uh damon grabbing his helmet his wings have been taken off the helmet, by the way. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that, but um, so I guess he didn't think his, he either has like two helmets that are really close uh, to looking the same, or he took the, the the wings off this one. But it does remind me of, of Barristan's wing, winged helmet that he's going to wear into the fire, fire, into the battle of fire, where he talks about the wings being like a hazard in battle. And so that he wouldn't, he, he shouldn't be wearing it. And then he goes and wears it. Um, 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Preston talking about circumcision. He must have made up 90% of the times that I've heard the word in the past two years. I, was all the circumcision talk only two years ago? Man, I don't get back into that. Back into that. Offending all the Europeans again. Um, okay, and then we get here. I'm thinking that, that this looks kind of like the veil. Um, but the thing is, is... um. In Iceland, the, the, the site that they actually filmed the veil stuff at in Iceland um, and they, they filmed a couple things in this in this cavern, but this is um, there's this cavern kind of thing where the where the, the the plates are splitting and you can actually like walk between the plates and they filmed, um, Aria walking to the bloody gate in the veil. And they also filmed like a, a scene, um, with the fens walking in it later on, even though it was supposed to be in the North. Um, I could tell you the name, but it's just like, it's, it's kind of, Everything in Iceland's kind of ridiculous in in how it's um, in how it's pronounced. So it's not really, uh, Thingveller, Thingveller, Ting. You know. So, um, if you if you wa went to my uh, you know Preston visits Iceland uh, video, which I which I have, I, I I go there. But um, this does not look like that, even though they're going to the Vale. You know, it would have been nice to return to Iceland and 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 go to the same kind of kind of spots. But I'm not sure if they really did that. So, nonetheless, must be. Um, let's see here. <laughs> By the way, I'm still offended at the eating part. Oh, this is uh, Europeans getting angry at me at, at various things. Um, and then, uh, here we have, uh, yeah, veil, veil, um, uh, high tower soldiers walking, um, and Carmine goes, Carmine, like, uh, always was talking about, like, how he loves the armor and how there's, like, unique armor for every house and he loves the care and time into that, um, yeah, their, their heads look like dicks. Um, but the, uh, the green flame, that's a fire and blood creation, um, stuff like that. Um, let's go back and take a break from it and, uh, get, get to some super chats here. We'll get to the rest of this. Um, stay up until three to ask. What's your work situation going to be now? What kind of schedule can we expect? Are you back to working full time? I am back to working full time, but you know, I, uh, here in DC, but you know, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I've got evenings and weekends and whatever to try to try to figure out, try to put things together. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I do what I can. I mean, keep in mind that like I had a full time job before when I was doing video stuff too. I just find, you know, I find time here and there. It's, um, but yes, uh, I'm, I'm working, I'm working full time again, uh, until, until, you know, we had to Dominican Republic. Um, come on, Preston, bring back the window. I do have a window here right now. I've, um, I've put a, I've put a, a sound curtain in front of it, but, um, I do have a window, but it's nighttime. You know, I'll, I can, I can, I can see what I can do. Look, I'm going to have a better setup. I don't know. I, it's something more interesting here. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, shitty weather in DC right now. That's true. And very foggy. Let's see. Um, more greetings from Denmark. Let's see here. Overall opinion of Stephen King's writing. I have yet to find another author that is so easy to binge his books. Um, Stephen King is an 
excellent writer in the sense that he is able to write stuff that is easily understood and digestible. He's a master at that. He is so good at writing a page that you can read in one minute and fully understand everything that's in the page. Um, it, it, as someone who like writes for the government, who like tries to make things as easy to understand for people, um, I am in awe of Stephen King's writing ability in that in that in that respect. Um, there's an old saying, I think it's Mark Twain, but you know people would just make this shit up. They say he says, "I wrote you an eight-page letter. If I had more time, it would have been one page." You know, like that kind of that, like. And there, there's a lot of truth to that. That like ma- making things concise and and nice is is a whole skill. And so Stephen King is a master at that. Um, so I mean, he. He's such a good wordsmith, but I do think that because he's chugging out novels, he's chugging them out, that he doesn't think about themes. He doesn't really think about where the story's going. He just kind of writes, right? And I think that is his weakness. Um, what I loved about the first four books of The Dark Tower is that he would go back and think about these things and slow them down. And so the, I think the first four books of The Dark Tower are some of his best work um, just because he was, he was slowing down and thinking about what he was writing. And so it's like, he has the ability to be like, to even go further and be like an epic, epic writer. Um, but he's just, he's, you know, he, he's so much about quantity. He has the ability to write like intense quality, but um, he just chooses not to. And so, I mean, <clears throat> if you, you know, you have to ask, you know, you, the, like what you'd prefer with, you know, Stephen King's written like 200 books and, you know, they're, they're all pretty good, but, you know, does he have anything that's excellent? Um, I don't know. Even though he's one of the, his ability to write is incredible. I don't know, you know, and he's just naturally gifted in that, in that respect. I wish I had his ability to, to write clearly. And, and and make it so you can just read a novel in a day, you know, and never be confused. But so that's my, you know, it, that, that's my opinion about him is just, um, hello, hello. What I miss. Um, you know. Oh, I heard that calzone bit. You got to stop that shit because that, that now it's never going to stop. Now it's just <laughs> going to go forever. Are you are you watching my video or are you just yeah, watching? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the one it's the one you sent me. OK, OK. Wait, no. Are you watching my YouTube video of my breakdown or? or... Um, No, I just the, the uh, I'm just I just the thing you sent over, I popped mm. it on. I tilted it. Did you yes, tell the audience where I got it? Don't do that. Did you tell the audience where I got no, it from? No, I did not. Because it, because, oh, you haven't. Have you heard of what's been going on like lately in YouTube? Like what's setting YouTube on fire right now? Oh no! What? 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 There's this guy named H Bomber who put out a video about plagiarists, and uh, oh. have you seen this? Yeah, your I boy Legal Eagle thumbnail. got involved. I saw the thumbnail. I didn't watch it. Oh, dude, you got to watch it later on. I watched the whole fucking thing. That was a good video. He, he takes on Internet Historian. He brings up your boy, Legal Eagle. Well, people accuse Legal Eagle of shit, but it was like shit that that kind of everybody does, right? Like, like people... No, no, no. Uh, Legal Eagle, it was not in trouble. Legal Eagle, his editor asked the editor of another person, hey, how yeah. do you do that thing? Just comment. Exactly. Like, everyone asked that. I've yeah, asked you yeah, this yeah. before. You've asked me that. In fact, um, people don't know this. So, and I don't think you remember this. When we, when the second conversation we've ever had, ever back in 2016, mm. you told me, you asked me, "Hey, how come you don't put more than one ad on your video?" I'm like, "You can do that," and you're like, <laughs> "Yeah." You're like, "Yeah, you can, you can definitely do that." And I'm like, "What? I didn't know I could do that." And you're like, "Yeah, Carmine, just do it." Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Oh shit!" So I've been, you, you helped me make more money. So yeah, we ever like YouTubers talk to each other. So I apologize. Uh, anyway, but, but what's what, like I don't know. Uh, I I know that that I mean it's pretty obvious when when a when a I don't know when when um, I've seen the situations where like yeah some big YouTuber that that's trying to chug stuff out like copy some like small YouTuber or whatever and and thinks they can get away with it. 
Mm. Is it about that, the video? It's, uh, uh, no, uh, for example, Internet Historian had this video about man stuck in cave, about uh, Floyd Collins, this man mm. stuck in a cave in Kentucky, and uh, he literally word for word copy this man's article and didn't even credit the man mm, 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 so. mm. yeah 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 mm. that's, uh, that's that's sad um i mean that stuff yeah that stuff happens all day long i guess on youtube but um um okay uh i asked quinn howard if he would like to come on one of your streams and he said he'd love to please make it happen please yeah sure i mean quinn quinn's great um, he, uh, he, um, he was, his, his, his was originally, his channel was originally called ideas of ice and fire, but now it's just, now he's just goes by, uh, by Quinn, Quinn's ideas, I think. And, uh, he, you know, he, people, people, um, he's, he's like the, uh, he's the, 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 the dune master. Right. But he, he, he started as an ice and fire channel. So yeah, I've I mean, tried reaching out to Quinn multiple times. He never got back to me. So I don't know yeah, if he like disliked guy. me. I mean, I know he just got married and I don't know how long, maybe it was like a year ago he got married or whatever, but he has a lot of, he has a lot of stuff going on, but anytime he'd like to come on, he's welcome to come on. I, he's, he's, he's great. But the, um, the, uh, um, but I know he's like very busy with a lot of other things. Like uh, he has like graphic novels and a lot of stuff in his personal life, but, he is, he is, he is welcome anytime. Um, why did Brandon and Sweet Robin never talk about their relation to certain show characters? Um, I think we're talking about, we're talking about, uh, um, Brandon Knight's King and, 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 and my Sweet Robin. I'm trying to think like, you know, as the fictional characters of, of, of the triad, I think they, when they first started out, they talked about it a little bit. Uh, I think there was an episode, I think maybe it was it Night's King's like first appearance. And he's like, he's talking about how he looks awesome or whatever. And, and, and his appearance in the show. Uh, I have to go back and think about that. But then, then they just kind of became these like separate entities outside of the show that that didn't really somehow meld with the characters in the show and then they kind of had this like parallel world going on where, where chad was the one that would mainly interact with everything going on and sweet robin and brandon like would 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 not um there was a few moments i'm trying to think that i think there was a moment where like um Sweet Robin and Elaine, like Sweet Robin has a has a nightmare and then, then he wakes up and Elaine's like, What's going on? He's like, Ah, oh, oh, I had this nightmare, and they were like, the dogs disappeared and it made no sense. Stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I should go back and look, go back and look at my good look at that. <laughs> look at those. Preston, what I the guess fuck I, are you talking about? What's that? What are you talking about? Talking about like the original chat and like like oh, the your characters! Appearances Never mind. of Chad, Sweet Robin, and, and Brandon Knight's King. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Ka Carmine Calzone, Eater, the un Unreliable. Uh, he, he, why does it bother you about the Calzone thing, Calzono? <laughs> We've been over this. We first off, Calzono. I'm leaning into because that, that you can Calzone's put that on T-shirts. Calzono is really cool. Uh, it was clever. It was clever. Shame you had to ban that guy for his anti-Semitism, but it was clever. It was oh, clever. God. Because <laughs> <laughs> the calzone thing was like one time, one time thing I ate. Uh, like back in Jersey, that was like four years ago. Pl four years plus, one time. This fucking guy never let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, hey, this is where this is where I am. I'm like in this in this world where like where like where like <laughs> yeah, I get somebody like doing too much anti-Semitism, I ban him. But then you know I'm critical of Israel, and I get I get people claiming that I'm an anti-Semite, and uh, and that, that's the world. So. Where we live in. Oh, oh. oh well, oh well. Um. Let, let, let's talk about the, let's talk about what else uh did you have anything to say on these first scenes i went over the the um the rhaenyra thing 
where this was from i know that leaks have been saying that this was going to be a a scene and so then um aegon and his and his stupid crown that's too big you know and about then, these leaks i don't know anything about these leaks oh yeah well yeah, yeah, yeah. there there is some stuff i wanted to say but i'm saving that for when we record the podcast okay, tomorrow okay. um but uh, yeah about that scene yeah there is something i wanted to say about that but i'm saving it for i i do have something on christian cole though what, what's that on christian on Kristen? so Kristen cole um is probably the most butchered character not in the a severely bad way not the mm. way they butchered some of the other characters from game of thrones but not not the way like yoron was butchered but Kristen cole is vastly different than he is in the the books and i kind of hate it um so in the show and I, as much as i hate this word he's kind of a simp for alicent and hmm He's he's a whiny bitch. He 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 mm. acts like a jilted ex boyfriend. Then he kills yeah. Joffrey Lonmouth. Okay. Then uh -huh. he wants to kill himself, and then she saves him. Fast forward yeah. 10, 15 years later, um, he's calling Rhaenyra quote unquote cunt. He is just doing all this crap. In the books, he is more focused and confident. In the books, he has his own agenda, and he is just you know doing things on his own. Kinda. He also throws B allegedly throws Beesberry out a window, which that's my headcanon that I'm going with. But in the show, it's different. He's unsure, he's insecure, he's a little bitch. And in that Green Council scene where they had the nail, he is not part of the conspiracy. And mm. He's more or less moving things forward. He's frustrated because Beesberry is saying all this stuff and Beesberry might throw a wrench right, in the plans. Right. And the only reason he moves against Beesberry is because of his frustration because he mm. wants to strike at Rhaenyra and advance Alicent's interests. <sighs> And he's not. And Dragon Demand's made a very good point. He's yeah. not the kingmaker like he is in the books. He doesn't crown Aegon. That's his whole shtick. He's the kingmaker. So, I mean, part of this is that George, like, retconned Kristen Cole. And it, it's too, it's a little too bad. I mean, it, he, he, he did it for, he did it for a reason. But, but, like, originally the Dance of the Dragons was only really, I mean, it started out as, as in its first mentions, besides it being in the, in the appendix. In the in the in the in the in a in a framing of of from the minds of Kingsguard, like so we talk, have Jamie talking about it to to Loris, and we have um, uh, Aries Okart talking about him to to Arion. I guess Arion's the one that brings him up first, and so she frames him as a sexist, and and and. Like from the beginning, what we know about the Dance of the Dragons is Kristen Cole, the Kingmaker, that he's the one that's doing it all. Like he's the one that changed. Like he is a Kingsguard that changed the course of history, um, and he shouldn't have done that. And then George goes and writes this other story where where Kristen Cole is a fucking minor character, <laughs> and like and retcons all of that, right? So. Uh, so I don't know. I it's hard to it's hard to even piece together the character of Kristen Cole because George retconned him so much and he's all over the map. I mean, I will say that like Kristen Cole is kind of a whiny bitch in the books when he's sitting there complaining that like, oh, we can't let Rhaenyra on the throne because after Rhaenyra comes comes Jace and that's a and he's a bastard and that's gonna that's the worst and um so he does seem to have it out for Rhaenyra. He does. But, um, and it is really weird that, it, you know, whatever their falling out happened 15 years earlier and he's still hung up on this, you know. So, and then he kind of disappears from the story, you know, <laughs> and, and like um, is not important at all, even in, even in Fire and Blood. He just kind of disappears. So he goes from, being the most important character, the pivotal character of the story to being essentially written out um, to being like, I don't know, a guy who, who 
convinced Aegon, though the conspiracy already happened, so it didn't even matter. He was going to be convinced anyway. Like the the the. So I don't know. I, I I think it's George's fault on this one. I mean, the show is doing what they can with Kristen Cole. Like that, you know. Um, you're right. He comes yeah, but, off as a whiny bitch. He's supposed to, you know. But but out of all the scenes they had the nail, it was the Green Council. And he just kills mm-hmm. Beesbury out of frustration. Sit down! Like, that could have been done better. He should have just thrown Beesbury yeah. out the window. And uh, I do like how... I'm considering, actually considering that, this, that the show is usually going for shock, you know, you right. think that would be the way to go, yeah. But, he's, but he did it out of frustration. It, it, he doesn't seem like he has a control of the situation. And in the books, he does. In Fire and Blood, he does. It seems like he is in on it the entire time. Even Allison is blindsided when everyone's like, wait, wait, what? What's going on here? In the show. But in the books, you know, she's also yeah. in on it. So. But to be fair, you could read in and say, like, well, Kristen Cole, like, he killed Joffrey Lonmouth in that tourney because he couldn't control himself. And, like, the flail or morning star because george gets that wrong but like the, the 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 flail is like a metaphor for who he is he's out of control just like a flail is not something hmm. that can be controlled very well you know fair, fair fair but you know you could you could play that you could play that the, the thing is none of these characters are fleshed out very well in the books so like you can you can do them as they as they are i mean i do think he's he's entertaining and in, in the sense that we can all make fun of him for being like the worst like the whiniest motherfucker in the world the, you know <laughs> girl, girl, girl has sex with me once 15 years ago I'm still hung up on her man must have been some uh some very good virgin sex that he had the the this is why i said we needed one more episode in the past i would i would have had episode six be an episode where you split it in half alicent wants to go back to the high tower to meet with her father a month after the writing with jo- uh, with uh, lenor alicent wants to go back Kristen uh, accompanies her while on the road they get to know each other we find out his his morals his beliefs why he feels so strongly the way he does and then back in king's landing harwin strong is still tasked with protecting rhaenyra and of course she sneaks out he follows her a little play thing and then they start to get into each other we needed one more episode to establish those two relationships specific, uh, specifically so yeah all right so i get this one jeez also, I'm once again asking you to order order yourself some spaghetti pasta and eat it on stream. And if you put a flashlight up your ass and another guy's flashlight, <laughs> it's no homo. The body parts are not touching. All right. Now no, you got to answer mean, that. I've no, no, no. Asked, answer that last part. Yeah, I've been asked to... Um, um, I've been asked to do this, uh, this, this spaghetti pasta thing. I'll have to, the thing is now, now keep in mind, I, I, I avoid gluten, so I'll have to get my gluten-free pasta or something, but, um, I don't know if I do anything like special. I just, you know, twirl my pasta with my, with my, uh, with my fork or whatever. Um, you know how Italians do it, right? I think we discussed this, how they like, yeah, have yeah, a spoon. they do, like spoons and shit. Yeah. I think in home Mac, they say you're supposed to cut it off with your knife on the side of the plate. So I don't mm. think american uh uh um style is supposed to be with the spoon but i know what you're saying with the spoon and the uh and the uh but uh yeah yeah huh huh. yeah i'm not getting the i don't understand the flashlights up the butt though (laughs) (laughs) that was a meme i posted uh, a while ago and uh, she's referencing yeah it was a meme i posted in my server some guy some guy on twitter was was being ridiculous people calling him gay and i guess he's like no dude it's definitely not gay (laughs) i don't know the rules around that okay harry Harry, we finally get to harry who is who is disappointed because he thought i missed his uh I thought he missed his um, super chat, but he's like, hey, Preston, I wanted you to be my first super chat. Broke Aww. his super chat virginity. Nice. Thank um, God you didn't miss this one. Otherwise, he would have gone Christian Cole on you and got very upset. No, I know. 15 years <laughs> later, he'd be like, all hung up. Um, <laughs> you got to go to Ben's Chili Bowl if you want a good half smoke. You, have you ever been to uh, to Washington, D.C., Carmine? I probably maybe passed it. I don't know. When I first came to America, I landed in Florida and went all the way up to Jersey. So maybe. So there's this uh, very famous 
um, uh, burger and hot dog joint. Um, and the reason it's so famous is that uh, U Street um, in Washington, D.C. used to be this incredibly vibrant um, uh, black area of town. And, you know, it was sort of like a, it had a, but, you know, it had all these jazz clubs and, and it was, it was kind of this cultural center of the black community in, in Washington, D.C. And then as, as, as crime kind of got worse, um, things went, were going downhill and then there was a huge riot and U Street was all burned down, destroying all of these, all of these businesses. And it, it, essentially like just like gutting uh, the cultural center of, of the community. And um, Ben's chili, Ben's chili bowl was one of the few places to survive. And so it's like this, this kind of landmark place um, in Washington, DC. And they serve, they serve, it's also a place where, you know, and then it eventually just became a place where if you're drunk and you're and after you come out of the, the bars, you can go to Ben's and, and get a, get a half smoke or a chili dog or whatever, you know? And so, um, it's also like a place where like locals go there a lot and, you know, the president always has to go there, or at least I would say democratic presidents always have to go there at some point. Um, there's a sign on the wall that says two people eat for free, Bill Cosby and Barack Obama. <laughs> And so the guy, the guy, like Bill Cosby is a huge patron of the place. And like the guy loves like Bill Cosby. And even though Bill Cosby is a rapist, he's, he's still like Bill Cosby eats for free. But yeah, but if you go to, if you come to DC, you do have to go to Ben's Chili Bowl at some point. Um, <laughs> no, so now we're back to, uh, this is another joke. The, uh, on, on Storm's End on why it doesn't look like as big. It was a, it was a. It looks, um, Storm's End, uh, it was a cold day. And so it's, uh, Storm's End doesn't look as uh, impressive, you know. <laughs> got to get some shrinkage. Got some <laughs> shrinkage. All right. So we've hardly gotten through this trailer at all. So Kristen Cole <laughs> executing people probably because probably after the Riverlands campaign, people, people came over um, at, at that point. Uh, we got the ball going going down the toilet. Okay, back to the toilet. Then we got the helmet that no longer has its wings. And then we're fucking in the veil, but it doesn't look like Iceland. All right, we're in. We're back into your high towers, but you love the fly high tower armor because you have a fetish for different armor types <laughs> in ice what? and fire. And these like guys' helmets look like penis heads. So, so real quick, um, about that, I gotta say, so uh, it's been widely known that I did not read the Hedge Knight uh, com uh, material, but I, recently I did, and I yes. read the comic. Uh, I read the comics, the Hedge Knight, Sworn Sword, and Mystery Knight, Mystery Knight being the best. I gotta say, whenever they do the tournament stuff in Hedge Knight and Mystery Knight, I fucking love the armor. It just looks so fucking cool. The characters stand out. It's just, yeah. it has a lot of personality to it, and I, I really like that. Like Stokeworth and Rosby, I doubt they have like, I doubt those houses are super powerful to where they have you know specific armor to that house so and it's generic fine the, the, this is so the appearance of stokeworth and rosby which um th this gets into uh like how very specific the show is going to the books so you know people don't put people really don't pay attention to this too much but like at the beginning of the war there was this riverlands campaign right and that and if you want to break it down there's like there's like the fucking battle of the burning mill and the taking of Stonehenge and the sack of Duskendale and stuff. And you could like go through these battles, but like it's, it, I didn't think that they were going to be very specific uh, because it's like, honestly, who cares? You know, it's like a paragraph and George describes this. So um, when George wrote the original princess and the queen, he actually didn't even flesh out the stuff. He himself was like, oh, there's a Riverlands campaign and it's over. And then when Fire and Blood came out, he, he, he went in and he started putting in a little more detail about the different houses. So Rosby and Stokeworth is specific 
to the the sack of Duskendale, where like they they start out as Rhaenyra supporters, and then they they're captured. The, the lords are captured, and they have to they have to go over. And so as Caswell is executed, Rosby and Stokeworth go over, and then they fight for you know in Duskendale, and this is why like the show is being very specific by bringing up cat like Rosby and, and, and Stokeworth in this situation. So it's not just that, like, yes, these are the ones that are very close to King's Landing, but there's like specific plot points of fire and blood dealing with these houses. And then later on when, when Rhaenyra like retakes uh, the area, she goes and executes them for, for betraying her. But um so it's like these people can't win. They're either going to get executed by Aegon or they're later going to get executed by Rhaenyra. But this is like very, very specific that we see like Rosby and, and Stokeworth. Like they're being very, very careful on following Fire and Blood, um, which I just think, you know, needs to be noted uh, on this. This is actually from from the books. And um like later on, we're going to see the Brackens and the Blackwoods, which is very specific again, because that's the, you know, the, that's burning mill, you know, like that's, that's another very specific battle. Um, so anyway, we, uh, we get Otto, he's, he's doing nothing, but he, he's going to get sent off because at some point he's going to get, uh, replaced by Kristen Cole. And then, uh, everyone talks about, Allison here looking weird. This is the this is the picture in which um Ness put a put a put a dick in put a dick in Allison's Allison's mouth. What was he doing with the with the drawing feature when we did your stream? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know what this motherfucker was doing. Rob looks very weird here. Let's <laughs> 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 we get like a meme like <laughs> okay. <Jesus. laughs> I know. Okay, and then we have uh him on the iron on the iron throne. How does hair grow so fast? It hasn't been that long. These Valyrians, do you think this is like canon, like show canon that like Danny's hair grows back so fast? Well, I know Danny never lost her hair on the show. So her hair grows back really fast in the books, like too fast. Um, so Valyrians just like grow, grow hair faster than, than everybody else. I think because we don't know, you know, it's not talked about that much, you know, like they don't get sick very much. Um, they're resistant to heat and their hair grows really fast. The resistance to heat thing was especially, uh, uh apparent during the Duncan egg sworn sword. Cause it takes place during the summer, the scorching heat and dunk comments often how egg it does not sweat. Yeah. He's just like, no, and, he's just like, whatever. And he doesn't get whatever. sunburned. Mm -hmm. Um, so her wearing her, her, her Jaharis crown, him wearing his, uh, his, his Aegon crown. That's the, the juxtaposition of that. Um, you know, you're supposed to think about conqueror versus conciliator, conciliator and stuff like that. Though, frankly, both of them were dickheads. Um, <laughs> but uh, okay, um, everything's very artistic. They're using a lot of artistic shots here. A lot of, a lot of. There's a lot of um, beautiful Allison shots in these. Uh, she, she Specifically, a little later on, that uh, Miss Amber pointed out to me after the fact. What's that? Oh no, later on, I'll, I'll tell you when it is. <laughs> okay, so what do you think she's lighting here? I don't know. Some fucking can I, it's some fucking fucking knows. candles. Some fucking candles. A lot of these scenes I skipped because who fucking knows what's happening. So this one right, right here, finally in the north, in the north mm -hmm. right? Some snow. So the reason we know this is not only because we know that Jace is going to Winterfell from the end of season one, but also because some stuff leaked about Night's Watch brothers. And this could be brothers of the Night's Watch taking some condemned men to be members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, this is a good comment, actually. Shipbreaker's Bay didn't look that intimidating. No, it didn't. Um, she, she, she was like... Just like walking up to the shore, only only near Storm's End was very uh, was very uh, 
um, intimidating. But should be should, should bring us bay the whole thing should be intimidating because we know that it's at least in t- as intimidating all the way to Rook to um to Griffin's Roost because Griffin's Roost is fucking crazy too. So the whole coast should be should be nuts like that. But um um. Huh, they added a ruby to Aegon's crown that wasn't there last season? I guess. Really? Hmm. Let me see. I have the House <laughs> of the Dragon downloaded here. Really? Huh. Let me see this. Open my folder. It was that episode 9, the very end. Yes, it was. The ruby was literally dead center. But as the, he says, there's another ruby. Where? Let me see. Another go, ruby? Go back to it. Let me see. No, you press and you go back to. Uh... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rosby. There. Where? I don't know. <laughs> I just see one ruby here. One ruby. Yeah, no, it's hard to tell. Huh. I mean, it's dark. Um... Backhanded compliment of Stephen King. I'm not I'm like in awe of him. Um, okay, let's see here. <laughs> you were talking about adding ads. He's like, what videos have ads? <laughs> premium just spoils me. It's true. I have premium too. But um, let's see here. Where are we? <laughs> we're, we're back with the anti-semitism i love how it's like it's like i i always in my time my time warp where i uh, like go back um oh man so so your boy got banned from lml stream too oh did he <laughs> yeah I, I think for the same reason <laughs> oh boy Ironically, uh, he was a mod on LML stream, from what I'm told. So. Oh, maybe, maybe. maybe I'm, I'm assuming he got removed from LML stream because he probably disagreed with LML. <laughs> That's usually why you get removed. <laughs> yeah, I'm critical of Palestinians, uh, not an American Palestine. I mean, pa- Palestinians uh, 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 um, have all of the weaknesses and and similarities and strengths of. Uh, um, of uh, Israelis, they're very similar. <laughs> Just one has a lot of po- one group has a lot more power than the other. Um, By the way, I, I got it real quick on on the whole Palestine Israel thing. Mm. I fucking love when you go in your comments and there was a guy I saw who goes, "I support Israel," and you reply to him, "Support him to do what? We support, support Israel to, to do what? what? To do what? <laughs> I love that so much." <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously been on my mind a lot just because of the news, but like, mm. um, but I find the whole thing really weird because like, look, look, you know, when someone criticizes America and like all of the bad shit America did and has done and is doing, like you kind of go like, you kind of go, yeah, you know, that, that kind of sucked. Yeah, that, that sucked. You know, like, it's not like people were like, oh, you know, America, like you guys invaded Iraq with, with under false pretense, false pretense of weapons of mass destruction and killed like, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of civilians. Be like, yeah. Yeah, but everyone's done that. Yeah. But, uh, America did that. But what's funny about like a lot of Middle East stuff, it's like you mentioned something that, that a side has clearly done it's clearly bad. And they fucking just deny it. They're just like, no, that didn't happen. What are you trying to say? Like, and you're just like, no, no, like just fucking own up to the fact that you did some fucking bad shit and that you're going to try harder in the future. And that this should be, there should be like a, 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 like a better end state. 
Like, you know, it's like, I know all the weaknesses that of America. Like, yeah, fucking supporting Pinochet. Oh, my God. Bombing Cambodia. Gee, ah, oh, you know, like, like, there's so many things, like, you know. Um, yeah, Iraq, Afghanistan, like, you know, as an American, I can be like, yeah, we did those things. Those were bad. We, you know what? We had slavery in America. It was really bad. <laughs> like... Not that everybody. The Middle East is just like full denial, full denial that like anything they do is wrong. You know, <laughs> like okay. Anyway, it's just been on my mind, but yes. Especially when you bring up the the, the treatment of women and gays. Oh sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, they yeah. don't like they don't like when you bring that up. They also, speaking of which, speaking of America bad, America got a little less evil over the week. Oh, because 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 Charlie Brown Kissinger dying. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well. Just a little Unfortunately, less. he lived a very long and rich and full life, so there is no justice there. So, a hundred years old, my fucking god! That's your, that's your fucking shit. Walter Frey right there, man. Fucking <laughs> Walter <pretty> Frey. Much. <laughs> <laughs> like the Walter Frey of fucking American politics. What, what's um, the theory? Is that Walter Frey is going to somehow outlast all of his sons and will be the last one to die? That's the yeah, theory? Probably, probably, yeah. I think it's, I think it's like our theory. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to see the Lannisters and Starks, you. Now, we, of course, you know, we've seen, obviously, like, Jason and and, and, and Tyland. Um, and we've seen, I guess, Cregan for a moment. But it, it, it's obviously, like, you know, you get a nostalgic feeling going back to Winterfell, right? Um, uh well, you know, we were, we were, um, Carmine and I were actually recently discussing the, the, the outline, the original outline of the Feast for Crows and Dance with Dragons and how the wedding was supposed to be a baritone and George changed it to Winterfell. And you're just like, well, yeah, Winterfell just seems better. Like you're, you're returning to, to this, like, to this, uh, important site, you know? Um, so it's, it's the same. There's something, there's something about Winterfell um where where we'd like to go back and see it but yeah we'll see we'll see about uh we'll see about about these starks i'd like them to be more than just like oh, i'm tough and i'm a stark i'd like some like personality to them but we'll see the kid that got to play cregan he looks like he'd be a, a john snow with a bit more personality so Mm-mm-mm. um but i'd love to see Castle rock like I I I want to believe that that House of the Dragon is going to have a better Castle Rock than the than the fucking Game of Thrones. Um, who sounds Stannis understands politics wants want to match Shireen with. Um, would hate the Tyrells since the siege is keeping Theon around. Sweet Robin. Um, so Stannis at the beginning of a clash of Kings is, is presented with um, who he should marry Shireen with too. And they, and they bring up sweet Robin and marrying Shireen to sweet Robin. And um, Stannis is like, ah, the kid's a weakling. And then, you know, Crescent is on his way to convincing him. And then, um, I think uh, Solis comes in and, and, and spoils everything about like about their alliances. So, you know, it's a weird it's a weird moment like where where Stan, where Stannis is like almost has a little bit of Randall Tarly in him that it's not just like about calculus, about winning the war, that there's actually a little bit of like macho. Like, I don't want any I don't want any like wimpy kid marrying Shireen. I want a manly, manly kid to, to marry Shireen or something, you know? Um, I'd love to see it. I want the, what the, what the exact line is. It's, um, yeah, he says, if the queen uh, murdered her husband, surely she'd want justice for him. She is a young son, John Aaron's heir. If you were to betroth Shireen to him, the boy is weak and sickly, Stannis objected. Even his father saw how it was, and he asked me to foster him on Dragonstone. Service as a page might have done him good, but 
that damnable Lannister woman and Lord Aaron poisoned uh, before it could be done. And now Lysa hides him in the Eyrie. She'll never part with the boy. I'll promise you that. Um, then you must send Shireen to the Eyrie. Dragonstone is a grim home for a child. Let the let the fool go with her. Um, and then uh, I think um, Solis poo poos that. But um, it's a. Uh, Yeah, I think he's convinced. He says, still, perhaps it's worth trying. So Sweet Robin was, I mean, Sweet Robin's a good match. I mean, except for the fact that he, he might die. But like, <laughs> he's a, everyone should want to, everyone should want to marry Sweet Robin. But um, uh, but I'm trying to think of anyone else that Shireen would 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 make a match for i mean if you go back in time i mean i suppose like theon would have been a good match um um i'm trying because you know you took the iron isle and isles and i'm trying to think of, uh try to pull in the dornish oh, i forget if um you know you could send shireen off to try to get her get her before tristane goes against um Gets with uh, Marcella, things like that. Um, with the Starks and the Aarons entering the show, Brandon and Sweet Robin need to talk about how they're related to these characters and how Brandon <laughs> Rank, the Stark ruler, sees them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what 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 fun uh, what fun um, jokes I can come up with. I don't know. Well, well you know, it, you, you, but you are right that this is, uh, um, we are, we are, we are, you know, relating to them. I think I'm trying to think, um, I think we did have a few, I'm trying to think, uh, I think sweet Robin, like my sweet Robin did like sympathize with, with, show sweet robin in the few scenes that were left like oh he had a really that is a really cool falcon you know how like sweet robin's obsessed with that falcon that that he, he gets from little finger and he's just like oh no but that is a really cool falcon so he has every you know every reason to be doing that you know um but uh we'll we'll see how the jokes go we'll see how the jokes go man it's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy time I have to ask you before uh, you move on. Um, are you going to do the same thing you did last time for season one, complaining, not complaining, but ripping on the grifters? Uh, I mean, we'll see what jokes are were on my head. You know, you know how I'm I'm a I'm an obsessive compulsive person. It's whatever whatever uh, I'm obsessed mm. with at that time. <laughs> you know, I mean, Jesus Christ, the gr that grifter in question is now like doing stuff with Ben Shapiro, so. Like what happened? Wait, who? Who? Critical Drinker did a video with Ben Shapiro. Oh, of course he did. Yeah, of course he did. You know, so isn't he Irish? Yeah, Scottish. Scot Scottish. Ah, same shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for that later. Uh, but like, I always love how Europeans always want to dip their dick in American politics because their shit's so boring. They got nothing going on over there. But I always love that. I yeah, always it love might it. be the other way around. I know that that. Ben Shapiro often tries to like do videos on things other than politics. So I think it might be the other way around that he's trying to do a, um, you know, branch out. Cause you know, he never wanted to be in politics. He wanted to be an LA screenwriter. He was always interested in that. What's up with like right wing assholes always wanting to be in Hollywood. Hollywood, just take the fucking hit and let these guys well, in the it, orgy it's... party. Cause Steve Bannon's the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, I mean, it gets into the insecurity thing, like you know, like the the, you know, it gets back into Kristen Cole, right? Like, oh, I hate these people that rejected me, you know, oh, like there, you know, at some point in these people's lives, it's like, ah, oh, like I, I, I was in love with some woman and then she she dissed me and now I hate women, you know, like, like I feel like there's that kind of like level to it. Like Ben Shapiro, he wanted to be part of Hollywood and they rejected him. So now he's going to like hate the left. The Hollywood represents the left, you know, that kind of thing. 
Um, Bannon must be like super pissed when he got rejected because but what at the same time Hollywood already had some disgusting ghoul of a person in uh, Harvey Weinstein so I guess well, there I mean, was no got, space for another one a lot of a lot of ghouls out there oh this scene yeah so so Miss Amber from the Rove de Tarvalon friend of the channel yeah. she uh she's like she pointed this out I didn't realize this she pointed mm. out how uh, they're really going for those uh, the booty shots with Allison and Rhaenyra. Yo, this this whole thing, like this whole trailer, is like showing off Olivia Cook, like, like constantly. Um, yeah, I do. But um, so this is a weird this is a weird shot because because like no leaks because of, no like film reports, you know, like the 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 spies or anybody. Uh, reported that this scene was going to be there. Um, this one was filmed. It, this went under the radar, and it's it's not from the books. Like Alicent never leaves King's Landing in the books. Um, so how is she like at some lake, looking like she's going to kill herself, looking depressed, sta- like staring staring over a lake? Like what is this scene about? Like no one knows. It's just kind of a big mystery. It's just so um, in my. Uh, you you watch my breakdown, right? Uh yeah yeah I did. I skipped this scene specifically because you're right. There is no information on it, so it could be a dream. Um, yeah. it, some people are saying it looks like the God's Eye. I I know people are. Everyone is cramming to ha- have insert the God's Eye into the story into the show. Yeah, even I they mean, with Game of Thrones. Here's the thing. Not that it can't be the God's Eye. I mean, the God's Eye is a huge lake. You shouldn't be able to just see the other side of it like this. Um, mm-hmm. But it's the show. Who knows? So I can't say definitively it's not the God's Eye. It, you know, it should be. The God's Eye should be not a lake where you're just looking to see the other side like this. Like this is. A, a it, it's why I skipped it in my breakdown because it could be a vision. It could be a dream. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. I'm thinking more like. How many dream sequences have we had in in uh, Game of Thrones? Can, do any come to mind? Uh, fuck, I can't recall. I actually can't recall. I mean, we have Danny at the House of Black and White, like that. I mean, the ha- that's House a of vision, Andrew. right? She's a vision or illusion, vision. <clears throat> but I'm talking like somebody has a dream and then wakes up, and you're like, "Oh, it was a dream." Hmm. And that's the thing, because in a feast for crows, I remember, I remember, like in a feast for crows, like Cersei has tons of dreams, and then she doesn't even have a fucking dream. They have a, they do a flashback, right? But she doesn't even have a dream, you know. Like I can't remember like any dreams that people have, considering that the books are filled with fucking dreams, right? Um. Right, like the book, the books are filled with so many goddamn dreams. But I'll be very honest with you, even as as someone who just recently watched The Sopranos, even the dream sequences mm. that Tony Soprano has, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So some of them are hit or miss for me, at least. So dream sequences could be hit or miss, depends. I do. I mean, I tend to not. I honestly don't really like them that much because I don't think, um, for the most part, they they don't advance plot. It's sort of like uh, you know, how in Star Trek, we we talk about like reset button episodes. You know, and you're like, you oh, everybody hates example. everybody hates reset buttons episodes because like they don't advance the story. Like no one remembers them, so like they can't affect the characters. You know, oh, like, dream sequences okay. like <clears throat> dream sequences like how much do they, um, you know, matter? You know, it's one thing if it like, if it like changes somebody's mind. Um, there's a dream sequence in Angel season four that I think is fucking incredible, but. Um, but it has a function. It like it releases Angel's soul, and he becomes angel- angelus in the end. So it's like one of my favorite episodes, and it's a dream sequence. But like, and a reset button. But you know, like, what function is it other than killing time? So I don't know. Well, uh, there are some movies with some fucking phenomenal dream sequences. Uh, American Werewolf in London had some had a cool one. The one that really stands mm-hmm. out to me in cinema was Sarah Connor's dream sequence about nuclear war. That mm. one was crazy. But for the most part, a lot of them are just hit or miss. From the director's cut, right? The director's I think so. cut of, of Terminator 2? 
where she's mm-hmm. like clinging to the the gate and her flesh flies off of her butt. Of yeah, that one was yeah, yeah. goddamn. Yeah, I oh, forget uh, if that's oh, that from oh. the original or not. I, I could feel. I, yeah, I've seen both. Like Kyle Kyle Reese appears in one in one of them in the director's cut or something. Mm. Which kind of makes more sense, but I don't know. I, I, I've, I'm, I'm conflating the two in my head. I can't, I can't remember which ones. But anyway, everyone's, everyone's talking about this. No one knows what it is. It doesn't seem to fit anything. She's not wearing green. Where's her green dress? <laughs> True. If um, it was a dream sequence, she should be in a green, a green dress. That would actually be a bit more interesting. <laughs> I remember the day when when you broke my uh, uh, super chat cherry. Oh man, I can't believe. Her. <laughs> um, you think they will show the tension between Aegon and Aemond? Will Aemond want the throne? Who do you think better, Aemond or Aegon? Um, they're both horrible people. First of all. I was talking about this with Carmine. Okay. So I'm going to piss off a lot of people. Watch the downvotes come. Eamon is not cool. Okay. He's not a badass character. He sucks. Okay. Like I'm saying it now. I just want you guys to know, like, give him the dislikes, not me. Don't go to my channel to dislike me. Give him the Eamon, dislikes. Eamon, like, there's nothing badass about Eamon. Okay. This guy, the, the, the greatest thing he ever did in his whole life is climb on a really old dragon and claim it. That's it. That's it. You know who else climbed on a really old dragon and claimed it? Viserys. And no one thinks Viserys is badass and cool. Okay. He climbed on, you know, Balerion the Black Dread and claimed it and was like, whoop, whoop de do. Okay. You know, climbing on old Vagar. And, and claiming him is, 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 it's nothing, okay? It's nothing. That's the best thing you ever did. And then after that, the only thing you did with your life is like bully little kids, okay? And like kill little kids. You know and why he's you, cool. You go, you, you go and you fight. You go and you fight. You, like this whole like you're a badass swordsman. No, he wasn't. He was never in a sword fight. He never had a badass sword fight. He had one, like he had a, he had a double team like sucker punch murder of Rhaenys on her dragon. And then he fucking gets killed by Damon, who has a tiny dragon compared to him because he was dumb enough to get blindsided because you know what? You have one eye. You shouldn't be fighting. Like, like it's just, you, <laughs> you know why suck. he's cool. You, you know suck. why the fandom likes him? Because he looks like an anime character. Exactly. He looks like a Final Fantasy villain. It's the same reason why the fandom loved Boba Fett, despite the guy having three lines of dialogue. Right, and falling in a pit like 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 a fucking pussy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of works many ways. Like, the pit is like a pussy. And he fell in a pit. Dude, I swear to God, yo, this whole thing about, like, swords are dicks and dicks are swords. I swear, even this, swords are dicks and dicks are swords. <sighs> it's, it's, I mean, look... It's in the it's in the material, okay? Like you can't deny that George isn't obsessed with it. The only time I ever ever recall feeling like a sword was a dick was was it Barbary Dustin telling Theon about Ned's brother and how she had sex with him? Mm-hmm. Was that Barbary Dustin? Yeah, that's the one time I felt like that was really what it meant. And then I mean, that's pretty over the top explicit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think she 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 like talks about Brandon's erect penis and with blood on it and, he, and, and Jesus and she says like she, he loved the sight the sight the, the sight of his sword or something with blood on it or something it was fucking something weird oh my god see um what was it uh the problem with the word like blood is it like appears too much in the story that it's hard to it's hard to find that. Okay, I think it's going to be in the turn cloak. Is that when they go under? Under. Here it is. You're like, I think it might. Re-. Look, <sighs> Brandon loved his sword. He loved to hone it. I want it sharp enough to shave the hair from a woman's cunt. He used to say, and he loved to use it. A bloody sword is a beautiful thing. He told me once. 
Um, and then later she says, I'm old now, but I still remember the look of my maiden's blood on his cock the night he claimed me. I think Brandon <laughs> liked the slight as well. A bloody oh sword God. is a beautiful thing. The fuck yes, we <laughs> it hurt, but it was a sweet pain. So, look, <laughs> it's not that there's no ands, ifs, or buts about that one, okay? The dicks are swords and swords are dicks. 100% in that situation. 100% <laughs> in that situation, yeah. I, there's some other, you know, like Joffrey making Sansa kiss his sword and things like that, you know. Um, but yeah, um, but you know, here's the thing: is is who's a worse person, Aemon or Aegon? Well, Aegon's a worse person. Okay, Aegon's Aegon's a, a a rapist and likes sending children, likes watching kids like battle in in pits. Okay, Aegon's the worst person. Aemon. Aemond is just very, very vengeful, but you know, he's so, but, um, I don't know if they're going to have any tension. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, Aemond eventually takes the throne, but, um, but I don't know if they, I don't know if there's a situation in the story where there's tension, like in the book, at least, I mean, they, they might place it, but I don't know. I don't know. Because Aegon doesn't then never wanted the throne, right? You know. All right. So this this everyone's been talking about too, the face off. Um. Like, do you think this is sea smoke, or do you think this is, uh, or do you think this is Cyrax? All right. Do you think this is? I'm sorry, uh, Dreamfire. Are you asking me or the audience? Yeah, you. You. Do you think this is Dreamfire? Um, or do you think this this is sea smoke? I have, it looks like sea smoke. However, you know, like I said in my breakdown video, people are going all over the place. Some people think it's Alan Valarian or mm. uh, Alan Hull, um, who, by the way, is played by our boy, Abakar Salim, from, who played Father in Raised by Wolves. I'm yeah. excited that he's going to be Alan the Oakenfist. Um, some people think it's Helena, which I thought was super cool. Maybe Helena takes initiative because Helena became a fan favorite out of fucking nowhere. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Like people just love the shit out of her. I, th I think so, it's just, you know, I, awkward, awkward dudes finding an awkward, awkward girl <laughs> to love. Or that something. is true. She's quirky. Yeah. Uh, so it's either Alan coming to swear fealty to Rhaenyra. It's either Helena coming to have a conversation with Rhaenyra. And the other third one that I heard, it's uh, another person entirely. And they want to challenge her to a duel. And this is some ancient Valyrian ritual where duelists on equal ground depart their dragon and like do some bullshit and then get back on and fight. Which, I mean... I don't believe that one, but I'll throw it in there anyways. So yeah, it seems a little far fetched. I mean, a little but, bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's the ice and fire fandom. Far fetched is like ninety five percent of the bullshit we talk yeah. about. <laughs> All right. Well, the only thing is, we we can see saddles, dragon saddles on both of them. Mm. Um, would Alan Oakenfist ha or I don't think he's Oakenfist. That's what I'm wondering. Point. I'm wondering if 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 a dragon seed would it would have. A, sa a, sa a saddle that, um, um, but then again, I don't know. Let's see. Um, cause Ad Adam of Hull takes sea smoke, right? I doesn't Adam take someone else. I think Alan takes sea smoke. Okay. Okay. All right. Who is, do we have the Alan actor? Is the Alan actor appearing? Yeah. Alan is Abu Bakar Salim. No, but so who, who, oh, Okay. Alan and Adam. Okay, 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 okay. So, Abu Bakr Salim is Alan, and Alan actually, has I'm sea I smoke. I am I am incorrect, and you are correct. Adam is Sea Smoke. Then who's Alan? Alan has which dragon? Alan has uh, who did Alan have? Greg um, Grey Ghost? No, Grey Ghost never gets claimed. Um, uh, no, he takes a uh, 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 one of he takes a Vermithor Jahar Jaharis's right. Um, uh, Vermithor. Is it Vermithor? I totally forgot. Everyone's probably yelling at us right now. It, that's it's. How could you forget? I think it's Vermithor gets claimed by um, Hugh the Hammer. I'm sorry. 
Mm, there it is. It means Ulf the White probably claims what Silverwing. But uh you know. Okay. Adam of Hall. I mean, I know the story, like Adam of Hall, like eventually. Yeah, Adam of Hull takes takes sea smoke. Alan yeah, so Hall. Yes, I, I believe Alan doesn't get a dragon. Alan does not get a dragon. Yeah. Okay. So this now, could I be. I think Adam. there is an Adam. Adam of Hull actor. There is um, Clinton Liberty. Clinton Liberty. So people are like, oh, maybe this is Lane or returning, and like. And so oh, he would have control one. over Sea Snoke, but 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 we know that Clinton Liberty is going to be taking the taking the dragon. So, mm. um, so well, that's know. another conversation we need to have that was somewhat glossed over last year. So you made a very good point. Is the connection between Dragon Rider and Dragon kind of like a Wi-Fi connection? The further you get away from it, the signal you you lose the signal. Because if I was in Showrunner Ryan Condal's position, what I would do is because Lenor is not dead. Sea Smoke should not let anyone ride him because mm. that Bluetooth connection, that Wi-Fi connection, even right. though the signal is super weak, it's still out there somewhere. So a new person can't get on. It's more Bluetooth than Wi-Fi, yeah, yeah, but yeah. so Sea Smoke should reject everybody unless it is like a Wi-Fi connection where the further you get away from it, you disconnect. So that should be yeah. answered. Yeah, I think they're just gonna forget about Lenor and have him have him get claimed anyway. I, I promise just... you, Lenor. I'll put money on it. Lenor is probably going to come back when uh, one of Rhaenyra's kids um, goes over to Essos and comes back late. I, I, I believe Lenor might bring him back. Maybe. So you know, you know, you know what's funny is um, in Fire and Blood, uh, the story. There's a story that Luke survived. His yeah, and he fall. comes back as the fisherman. Yeah, what's uh, funny is that, about like, everybody that everybody should just like hang out together, like all the people that kind of disappear. Where the you know it's like Nettles and Luke, and Lenor, like they're all secretly like chilling somewhere in Essos. They're all chilling, having a party in Essos. Which one of Rhaenyra's kids is the one that's taken and sent to Essos? It's Viserys, right? Little Viserys. Yeah, Little Viserys is. Um, mm-hmm. they, yeah, he's he's he's. Uh, they they think he's dead, but he's actually like held hostage. That yeah. would be cool. Uh, have Alan Oakenfist go out, find him, Lovisaris, and then come back. And Lenor helps him out. Bros, two bros, and then maybe there's a scene where Alan is like, "Yeah, you're, I'm Lord of the Tides now," and Lenor's like, "You deserve it," and then he just goes and leaves. Yeah. Because isn't Alan Oakenfist the one who finds Viserys, or is that someone else? Um. I for, I totally forgot Fire and Blood. I, 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 we gotta get back. I mean, on that's that. very late Fire and Blood too. Like we didn't even review that part. Like you know, like like we could. You give me on give me on Rogue Prince stuff. I'm, I'm I know it back. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. Alan was widely praised for having rescued Prince of Ceres, mm. although Lord Peak disapproved the large ransom of one hundred thousand gold dragons. Aegon's regents, however, granted the new honors to Alan. Yeah. So Alan goes out and grabs. I was correct. Alan goes okay. out and grabs little Viserys. Yeah. And maybe Lenor, you know, has him. You know, maybe Lenor helps him out. This is like yeah, a, probably yeah. a season four, season five thing. Uh, plot hole. Marillion was gifted a horse in the Eyrie, which doesn't have a stable. By the way, do you think he's still alive? Face hidden during interrogation and uh, tormenting Robin to insanity inside the walls. Um, he's he's not given 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 a horse, but I think they would just leave all of their horses at at the at the gates of the moon. Um, but. Um, or are they saying that Marillion was gifted a horse by Lysa? Um, I guess you just have to like go down to the gates of the moon to ride it around. So I don't, I don't think it's like too much of a, of a plot hole. But um, we, on this specific issue about Marillion, Marillion being alive, like Carmen and I recently talked about this, and and um, we're going to do a special. Did, we're going to do another special pl- um, podcast on this issue, right? 
Or did we already? Do yes, it? it's yeah. it's my uh, Marillion idea. And in the in the time since we discussed it briefly on stream, people have messaged me and said, "Bro, why are you?" St I, this is why I fucking hate. I don't know how you do it, dude. I really yeah. don't know how you do it. But someone was like, "Dude, why are you stealing so and so's theory, motherfucker?" I literally said. No, I'm not. This is not mine. I I just thought of yeah. this. If someone has the same idea, it goes to what I was saying. Right. Everything ice and fire that can be said has been said. Just proves my fucking point. But yeah. someone actually helped me add to the whole idea, and I didn't realize this. Apparently, Littlefinger, while he's in the Eerie with Sansa, Sansa says something to him. Blah 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 blah. And Littlefinger says to her, "I didn't catch this." He says to her, "Don't worry, it's okay. Marilly and I have a deal worked out." Yeah. What is this deal? That adds to it. What is this deal you guys have worked out? Huh? Interesting. Yeah. No, I mean the the funny thing about all the the, the like crazy theories that that um that we've heard and I've come up with and I've mentioned is how often I'll say something and someone else will be like, I came, I thought the same thing or I came to that same conclusion. You know, it's it, it's an amazing thing. Like, um. I mean, we're, we're trying to figure out what George is coming up with. So in a sense that like you're you're it's not really stealing a theory, right? Because you're trying to you're trying to be you're trying to match George's theory, right? It's supposed to be George, right? Um, so I don't know. But we, we do plan on talking about this issue because it's a, it's a it's an interesting and juicy one about that. I, and people have been I mean, I, I thought about it. Uh, a little bit, but you know, people have been mentioning more stuff. I guess even Carmine bringing up stuff from from going back to the inn at the crossroads and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of weirdness with Marillion, a lot of lies with Marillion. Um, maybe maybe it's time for a time, time for another uh, another feast reread, at least of mm. Sansa chapters, um, and get back to that. But I I think that. Like mo like, but honestly, if you're going to ask me, do I think Merlion's alive? I think it's a it's a, I think George, Schrodinger cat, like him. She, he like he wrote enough things where if he wants to bring Merlion back, he can, and if he mm -hmm. never brings Merlion back, it doesn't then it, it doesn't matter. You know, like it, it, it's like like I say, it's like Quentin. You know, like. He's neither dead nor alive, but um, <clears throat> I mean, there's so many weird things with Marillion, right? You know, <laughs> bro, why are you stealing theories, dude? I'm actually working on the theory no one's ever thought of that Marillion is Nettles, and Barbary Dustin is Nettles, and Quentin is not alive. He's he's been Nettles the entire time. He's so everyone Nettles is Nettles. So everyone is Nettles. It's my theory. Um, Martin says Trump 2024, which is, uh, I agree, Martin Trump 2024 for prison. Yeah, I agree. For prison. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, a funny thing. Shit. Um, I don't even know. I don't know how any, how anyone can be still be like supporting, supporting him at this point. Um, I don't know how anybody could, could, could support him from the beginning, but so at this point it's just kind of nuts. So, right. It's just like, what would you. Like he's he's actively saying like he's going to end democracy and like round people up and execute them. Like he's 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 literally been saying these sorts of things on True Social. It's kind of crazy, um, but really weird, really really weird time. Um, but you know, if if he's elected again at the end of I mean it's the end of American democracy. It's just it's just over. America can can uh, can. We had a good run. We had a good run. Um, callback forgotten characters, Orland of Old Town must have seen a lot of stuff being in important places at, at important times. Someone for the fanfic. Um, oh, so Orland of Old Town is a, um, singer royal harper for house baratheon um when king Bar when robert comes to winterfell he brings his singer all the way and then in a um and then he did then he just kind of disappears um he's well he, he then appears at the royal wedding 
and then we never see him again. So Orland's around. Um, but but also what's kind of funny is that uh, um, George spelled his name two different ways. I think he was Orland and then Ormond or something. Um, but you're right. This character needs to be brought back. Um, I think he, he, he's going to have to appear sometime. Because the guy, the, guy, the guy went all the way to Winterfell. Oh, wow. Well. Um, let's see. All right, we're, we we haven't even gotten through this uh, trailer. Okay, what's that? What was that? What was that? The 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 dragon pit. What's this, Carmine? Uh, looks like the dragon pit, or yeah, looks like the dragon pit from afar. Okay, that's it. All right. And so when we first uh. When we first saw this, it looked like she had scars on her face, but that's just a veil. And she's yes, all in black, so clearly this is her in mourning, and uh, little embers are flowing around. It's a funeral pyre. Yeah, so we know that, um, yeah, I mean, you know, death of her kid. She's going mm-hmm. to be sad. She's going to be sad. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, now, someone worked out that this was, this was um, the actor for... Adam of Hull, I think. <clears throat> I I couldn't tell if it was if it was like I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. Neither of us could actually. I think this is actually Clinton Liberty. Um, it would make sense since it's sea smoke. And, yeah, and that's sea smoke above him. So I think this is Adam of Hull, and that's that's probably sea smoke. And is that is that is that a rope? Makeshift or... spear, maybe he's fishing. Yeah. Let me let me look at that again. Or fishing rod. Yeah, it seems to be a fishing rod or fishing spear. Yeah. But obviously, you know, these are supposed to be Lanor's bastards. I wonder how much they're going to mention that. You know. Um. But. Uh... They're probably going to make it to where it's um. Corliss's bastards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably. You're right. And then they cut to a different... Is that still him? Alright, everybody's coming out of the woods. Into this green field. Who mows that? Do they... <laughs> or do they... Maybe that's just, you know, people's sheep should be out there. I don't know. Yeah. What's that? What did you say about this specific council? You said something on the stream yesterday. What did oh, you really? say about this? Spe- yeah, you said something. I forgot what you said. Oh, I think I was talking about how they're putting Rainies on one side and and Damon on the other as like her main advisors. Mm. Um. Which um, I'm trying to think of like that original Black Council is like Rainey's talks a lot, but Damon doesn't really talk that much. But um, so I think that, that that's how they're that's how they're playing it. Uh, I, not much else to, to really say. Just you know, they're they're all there. And we get Corlys just doing his thing, and then Damon. Oh. So go back to Damon. I mean, it, it, it's funny because like, looks like a weirwood tree, right? Which makes it it's remnant. What's funny is it's reminiscent of like Damon hacking the weirwood tree, waiting for for uh, Aemon, but that obviously doesn't happen for for much much longer. And so, I mean, he could be anywhere. I mean. Do you think so? Okay, so do you think we're probably gonna get a weirwood tree somewhere in the Riverlands? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, he could just be wherever Bracken Blackwood, 
Heron Hall. But this, isn't the Blackwood tree dead? Uh, um, yes. But um, they could be they could be at Heron Hall, I suppose. So this is either him at. I mean, is there a weirwood tree in Heron Hall? Is that confirmed? There's definitely a weirwood tree at Heron Hall. Or no, in the show. Um, in the show, because is did did you ever see a weirwood tree in <laughs> season two or three? Whenever she's in Heron Hall. No, 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 I did not. So. But there wasn't a hair, there wasn't a weirwood tree in King's Landing either. <laughs> exactly. So we we might actually be getting the weirwood tree in Heron Hall after all. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's probably. I mean, like if we're going for the event for the events, like all like the only thing that Damon does is he goes and he flies and he takes he takes Heron Hall, bloodlessly with his dragon, and then he's there, and then the, then they have the Riverlands campaign, and then I mean. And then after that, he like teams up with Nettles and then he looks for Aemon. Like that's his whole history of the war. Like Damon right, doesn't right, do right. very much in the war. Um, so it it's probably him at Harrenhal. Um So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I don't remember a Weirwood Tree in Harrenhal in the show in Game of Thrones. But if I guess Ryan yeah, Connell no, is bringing it here. So. Yeah. so people were saying how this may be... Damon executing some of the traitors in King's Landing because of the Weirwood Tree in King's Landing. But it's possible they're bringing in Weirwood Tree into Heron Hall, and this could be him in Heron Hall executing some traitors. Yeah, probably something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe when he first arrives, you know, he takes uh, he takes he takes it, and um, I forget if he kills anybody because I think in, I think the people just surrender to him. And then we know Eamon kills someone, right? Uh, in the in the right in the when book he when Heron Eamon Hall. retakes it, he kills people for for surrendering too easily. But, right. Um, but Damon doesn't. But yeah, I mean, I want to do like. By the way, by the way, I know this. I know we're I'm, I'm late on this, but House of Stokeworth and Rosby showing being shown there. I, I said in my breakdown video, I love that we are getting more than a handful of houses because it just seems like the North is the only places is the only place that has more than three houses. Because mm -hmm. you have Mormont, you have uh, obviously Bolton, Karstark, mm -hmm. Umber, and a bunch of other ones that Sansa lists. Um, but here we're actually getting more houses and you got to throw in the Game of Thrones politicking where initially Rosby and Stokeworth were siding with Rhaenyra and now they flipped. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, all, you know, all these houses are flipped. All, all these people are, uh, I mean, you can't blame them. I mean, it's, it's just what, what, what they do. I mm -hmm. mean, if somebody's going to execute you, you're like, ah, yeah, I, I guess I got to go over. Um, let's get this one. Uh, do you think Sarah snow, the Sarah snow story was real in fire and blood or just a rumor? Do you think the show will do a Sarah Sto snow story? Um, I think that you're meant to think that it's made up, um, heavily implied that it's made up in fire and blood, but at the same time, like, I think in the show, they're going to make it real. <laughs> yeah, so, um, because the show likes to have like interesting, interesting events. And so the, the book, like the book is all about, we can have interesting events, but they're all fake. They're all like made up rumors um but the show can't do that like it actually has to make them real um in order to make in order to make it, things entertaining it can't it can't because they're they're showing you actual events so i think that will i think sarah snow is absolutely going to make an appearance um and they're gonna have that entire plot line and i don't think uh you're gonna but, have yeah. You're gonna have a stark plot line without a bastard? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. You're gonna have a, you have to have the snow something in there. John right, Snow, right. Sarah Snow, Jacob Snow. Well, plus, it's like you know you gotta remember it's like chances for chances for romance and titties and and all sorts of things that that HBO likes, you know, and and that the show likes, you know, the show likes to shock us. So we gotta have we gotta have some more we gotta have some more. We got, there's going to be plenty of violence. We got to have a little more sex, right? So, you know, I know we know that Eamon's going to be getting it on. And, uh, you know, we want, we, Jace, Jace is probably going to have some, some, some love scenes or something in order to, uh, to add some sex to the, add some sex to the violence. Um, 
uh, real real quick shot of the of the 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 worst character. You know, I said I was gonna get down votes. I didn't get a single down vote for for trash and Amon. <laughs> Not a single one. What a loser. What a loser. You suck. He's no he's no good at fighting. Well, mainly because he doesn't have an eye. But <laughs> that's uh there's the Iron Throne. They, we finally see here if you there it is, the gold dragon on black. We finally see mm. them. They've corrected it. Because at the end of season one, if you recall, when Otto comes to treat with them, they're like, it's a green dragon. It's a green dragon banner. I'm like, no, it wasn't. It's was stupid. It was dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, funeral okay, procession this like a funeral landing. Pr procession with yeah. the drums. Mm -hmm. And then another big field. People riding, people riding. It's probably all these, the, the Riverland stuff we're talking about. Burning Mel. And, uh, um, Rainey's so, giving her usual trailer line, bro. Every that was, time. That's, uh, when I watched your when I watched your breakdown, I was like, "Yeah, that's true." Like you're just, she's just every like trailer time. woman. Like that's all she is. Like I say things that are gonna be put in the trailer. They don't necessarily make any sense in the context of the scene, but they're gonna be. Put I'm in gonna the trailer. Fucking flip. I'm gonna fucking flip if by the time because she should be, she won't be here in season three or season four, but. If they fucking use some voiceover from previous seasons for the season three trailer, I'm a fucking flip. Because every fucking time it's Rainey's. I'm trying to think always like, telling Rainier I mean, some shit. Who is as awesome as her for delivering? I mean, they're just gonna give it to Corlys now. After that, have you? I ever guess yeah. Imagined yourself on the Iron Throne, like just <laughs> she just like threw that line in nowhere. It made no sense. Hmm. Uh, yeah trailer a trailer girl rainy's the trailer girl <laughs> we're gonna call her trailer trash <laughs> um <laughs> it's trailer trash um welcome to dc spoiler uh but walder is the last one alive after the white walkers wipe out humanity <laughs> <laughs> white walkers walk in and he's just like you think i'm scared of you guys whatever <laughs> oh man um what else we got oh and then bela this is another big surprise um that no one, no one knew that they were going to do a Bela scene. But of course, like it was filmed on green screen. So like, that's why there were no spy reports on it. But this is a big surprise because Bela doesn't do very much in the entire war. Um, and, and what she does do comes much later. Like uh, when Aegon takes Dragonstone, he, uh, Moondancer attacks uh, Sunfire and is, is killed pretty killed pretty quickly uh, because because Moondancer is such a tiny dragon. Um, so it's interesting that they've even like put her in here. Like um, I don't know what she's going to be doing on her tiny little dragon, but uh, I guess that's what I was thinking too. And Moondancer, small, nimble, but right, mm -hmm. I mean, you know. This is a, this is a, I mean it's not like Sunfire is a huge dragon so like this is a dragon that like you know was was, was wiped out pretty easily by a wounded Sunfire um, and so it's it's uh but you know they show her flying doing something I imagine she's just I imagine she'll just be with her mom and then they'll attack and she'll tell her like you know fly away and she's like no no and then she flies and she sees her she sees her grandma killed and she flies away going oh i bet it's i bet it's just that right yeah but why the hell would rainies let her granddaughter on the field of battle like why unless unless bela goes without rainies's permission and then at the very toward rainies is about to win and then rainies sees bela come there and she's distracted and then that's when <sighs> Rainey's gets fucking murked. And then Bela sees this and she's like, ah. the thing is, the thing is, is they were, you know, 
they were um it was a sneak attack on Rainey's. Like she didn't know that she was going to get um uh attacked. Um I'm trying to remember so she had gone Yeah, so Rainey's goes to attack like a bunch of soldiers on the ground. So she thinks, you know, um and then it was it was like a, a sneak attack of Sunfire and Vagar. So she may think it's like super safe. That we're just gonna be in the sky and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna burn a bunch of dudes walking around on the ground, you know? Something like that. I don't know. But uh Um Who's the leader of the dead masses that get all of the lasses? Night's King. Oh yeah. Don't be silly, sweet Robin. Dogs don't disappear. How summer child of summer child. Tom Med. Yes, yes. Um This was uh this is the old um uh, Night's King song. Uh way back in the day. It's been how many years now? Fucking A. Um trying to think when this uh shoot is that going to be season season six right so it'd be season six watch and a man who actually once almost died oh my gosh it's so it's so long ago let me see here It's such a different, oh my God, they're so, I do have to say, ugh. all right, this is, I have to, I have to admit, this was, this was, this was a pretty good, this was a pretty good um, uh, episode here. Hold on. This one here. Let's move, uh, move Bela over here. So. <laughs> So remember, Carmine, when I used to start my things with the, uh... <laughs> Good thing you're not a boy anymore. Because you have no cock. <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to get flagged for that. I, I mean, I don't even know. But, like... Like, I just do the best. <laughs> I guess not it's on us, <laughs> only when I was fucking your grandma <laughs> so I think yeah he goes uh, sweet robin is like upset dogs about that dogs that just that. vanished for no reason that's ridiculous dogs just don't disappear <laughs> dogs are just disappear. coming awesome the pizza's here oh god no <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh man, my voices were so bad on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the dogs went. <laughs> yeah, that was that was some, <laughs> some good good days. That was from fucking by the way, seven years ago. Seven mm. years ago. <sighs> man. Oh well. Um Bela, and then we get the dragon taken off. I guess it's just gonna, yeah. And then I imagine that's Rook's rest. And then there seems to be some sort of riot around the funeral, which was. I heard. Um, I heard a leak that. Uh, don't know how credible this is. Rainier is gonna somehow sneak in and cause some trouble by trying to feed people because apparently the people are starving or whatever and she's going to feed people and try to get them the riot or, or whatever was there a riot around this time during king's landing before the big mm. one uh, I, don't, uh, I mean i don't remember it's certainly not princess of the queen let me let me let me let me recheck fire and blood for a second because i don't think there was uh maybe i'm maybe i'm because go. all this rioting stuff is going to build up for the big one towards the end. Right. I mean, how many riots do you need in uh, in, uh, in King's Landing? 
Um, okay, so after the blood and it, it does kind of parallel Game of Thrones season two with the riot in, in Thrones. No, it just said that they um after the death they like tortured blood for for thirteen days, and um that was that was it. And then uh, Helena got depressed. So that's that's it. So no, I don't remember. There was no, there was no, no funeral, no, no riot that we know of. Um, so, uh, so this is the the black the 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 brackens right here. Um, they seem to have killed off the the bracken that was supposed to be in this last season. And so now we have different Brackens like continuing on. I, this is a change from book to show, but, um, but nonetheless, the fact that they're doing um, burn the battle of the burning mill is very specific. So it's a, uh, it's um, random dudes on fire. It's always the same thing. Like, by the way, whenever they do like dudes on fire, um uh, look i've never been on fire uh maybe maybe someone in the chat can correct me like like if you're on fire doesn't don't people know about like stop drop and roll it, it seems like whenever people are on fire in movies they're always waving their arms to show that they're on fire oh you know it's never uh they never stop drop and roll they never Let me see that really quick here. Riot. And then the Kingsguard's trying to get her away. Somebody grabs her, which just seems like a really bad idea because the Kingsguard's just going to kill you, which is what you see right here. Don't even try it. Bracken, dude on fire. And then that's Damon without his dragon wings because those, those dragon wings were in the way. And... There's what blood or cheese with Helena. Um, and I, I was making the joke that he doesn't look anything like Laurie Strong. Oh yeah, that's right. That that's your. I forgot that that was your idea that Laurie Strong is secretly he gets rid of the limp and uh, he's either blood or cheese. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think it makes sense that he's faking. He's faking the entire time. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Here we go. Self-proclaimed anti-woke progressives and anti-woke leftists have said that House D is a great example of a show that's progressive without being woke. Uh, the butt shots would be taken as further example. <laughs> Um, you know, it, I don't, I don't really get, like, I think like, um, like the term, the term woke, it, it, which is just an extension of politically correct, right? Like back in the day. Um, I think it means, mm, I disagree, you know, but I think it means different things to different people in different contexts. Like, I don't think when, when like conservatives, that are trying to ban books and they, they say woke mean, mean the same thing. I think in, in this environment of talking about movies and TV shows, um, I think people don't like heavy handed politics. And so I think some people think heavy handed is, is like, perhaps synonymous with woke. Um, but I think house of the dragon is pretty heavy handed. <laughs> so I don't even know. Um, I think in the end, it's just like, if somebody likes it, it's all of a sudden it's not woke. And therefore, like, I think it's as simple as that. Like they like it. Therefore it's not woke. Um, if I don't like it, then it's, then it's woke. Um, but House of the Dragon is very, very political. It's very, very progressive. 
Um, it's pretty obvious and in your face. It's pretty heavy handed. I mean, we have characters looking at the camera, doing trailer stuff, doing trailer trash, saying like, you know, men will never let women sit the iron throne, you know, and, and all of this stuff. I mean, it's pretty freaking clear. It's um, and obvious. Um, it's just that they like the show. Like, uh, uh, it's a good show. That's it. It's, That's it's also difference. smart. It's also incredibly smart. So I, I, I've said this before, but there's a yeah. YouTuber by the name of Robot Head. Robot mm. Head, for whatever reason, didn't read the Grifter manual, the Grifter handbook. And in the Grifter handbook, because Nerd Roddick isn't stupid. Critical Drinker isn't stupid. They know that if the show is good, even if it has woke themes, they have to ignore the woke themes and praise it for being good. Just like how the, the Grifters loved Mandalorian. And but they hate everything Disney and Kathleen Kennedy. So therefore, right. Mandalorian is not the Kathleen Kennedy Disney Star Wars. It's actually secretly John Favreau and Dave Filoni in a civil war behind the scenes right, against right. Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. It always yeah. has to be a mental gymnastics. The reason I brought up mm. uh, YouTuber Robot Head is if you look him up right now, he has a video called Garbage Across the Spider Verse, right? And he's talking about the the recent Spider Verse movie. He was destroying it, and you know what? Oh His, God. Oh, yeah. Spider-Verse is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. And he gets demolished in his comment section. His likes are 8,000. His dislikes are 6,000. So if you go through his comment section, uh, people are just constantly yeah. disagreeing with him. It's because he didn't read the Grifter handbook. Nerd Roddick and Drinker read the Grifter handbook. They know there are things you like and things you dislike. And House of the yeah. Dragon was, was, was good, despite it being more woke than Rings of Power. Oh, oh. I mean, it's much more woke than Rings of Power. I mean, like, Rings of Power, the only thing woke about it is, like, placing in female leads in places. Like, that's it, right? Um, I'm a black elf who, for some reason, yeah. if you ask every single Lord of the Rings YouTuber, people who have actually read Tolkien for years, not random grifters who, who proclaim yeah. they're Tolkien experts, actual Lord of the Rings YouTubers are saying the black elf is the most Tolkien-esque character in the show. The only problem these grifters have with the black elf is because he's black, he's but black. they call it woke because it's a dog's whistle. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's well, basically it. The fact that they're like, or like... The, the Black Dwarf, who, by the way, is one of the best characters in the show. <laughs> like, like, right? Like, Wait, which character? The Black Dwarf. Odisa? Yeah. I, she was barely in it for me to call her the best. Well, she was I love barely Dora. in it, but she was great. She was fine in her scenes. Yeah, she was fine. The, uh, Ar uh, Aaron Deer, who is the Black Elf character, he, to me, yeah, he was great. Yeah, he's in the show a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, or the I guess the MILF, like, leading the village or something or you know whatever i don't know but <clears throat> yeah i mean i don't know it it, it they, they're just gonna keep doing it forever it it, it it seems to get the clicks you know now well of course I, now they're sitting I, by now the way sitting around now they're sitting around going oh ha, ha. like it, it it worked we're winning because the marvels didn't do well even though whatever like uh neither did mission impossible seven you know it's like Neither, neither did Indiana Jones or right. Quantum Verse, uh, like right, like all the all movies are 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 uh, are, are uh, not doing well, and with the exception of Barbie, which was like super woke. So I don't know. Oh God, I have no idea. Like I have no idea. Like the the what's going on in their minds. I mean, I know what's going on in their minds. They're just saying whatever to get clicks, we, and it's kind of a disservice, like to people, because man, like. Um, so there's a recent, um, article, there's a recent survey that came out about dating and it turns out that left-wingers are unwilling to date right-wingers, but right-wingers are willing to date left-wingers. Did you, did you, did you hear about this? Yes. That's true too. With, with yeah. adults. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's like, oh man, if we if we don't find some sort of compromise, then 
then like how are people ever going to get together and it's like well what do you mean like compromise like like <laughs> you know like let me um so i'm i'm ahead in the in the in the chat i want to highlight this dude's mm. comment here marcus hertz says i think it was the marketing of rings of power versus house of the dragon rings of power was beating the woke drum about the diversity casting no it wasn't ryan Condal, the showrunner for house of the dragon literally said and we were we recorded this this is a podcast on my channel mm -hmm. that we recorded and i got dislikes from both left wingers who got pissy and right wingers who got pissy ryan condo literally said the reason we made house valari on black is because there were too many white people on screen he literally mm -hmm. said this so shut the fuck up marcus hurts i'm sure you didn't mean that in a mean way i'm just being an asshole uh that is not true you know what people, it is people people just remember that one focus group like thing they did once and then it, that, that that like spread around viral. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. They the focus group, and the and the kids are like, "This is looks really great because it's diverse." And then like everybody made a video on it. And it's like it's like some people forget about like how marketing is done. You know, like somebody like one viral video misrepresents like how the marketing was done. I don't remember any woke marketing from Rings of Power. Like I, you know, because I woke just, doesn't mean anything. It, it's it's whatever right wingers don't like. Pineapple on pizza, woke. But I don't like remember. I don't woke. remember anything being like diversity. Finally, diversity has come to like you know nothing like that. Finally, diversity has come to Middle Earth. Like, I you know I never I never saw a trailer like that. I only saw that that weird focus group thing that hmm. people were making a big deal about. Um, like the tra like that that Rings of Power trailer. I don't. I, I just remember the good old days and I'm going to get flack for this. I know, but it's the truth. I just remember the good old days where assholes who would complain about this would get fucking wedgied in high school and thrown in the locker and told to shut the fuck up. But then Gamergate happened and all of a sudden these assholes became overnight celebrities because yeah. a bunch of incels who were always there suddenly realized there were more of them out there and they could all come together to rally behind one fucking banner. It, it, it was yeah. Gamergate and then Trump winning that really catapulted these fucking nerdy losers into the spotlight. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a weird world that we live in now cuz before when you had a create like a crazy bad idea you know your community, your friends would like around you would tell you like that's a bad idea. But now if you have a bad idea, you can go online and find somebody that thinks the exact same bad idea as you and you can convince each other that it's not a bad idea. So there's no checks on anyone anymore. Like you can find like someone to support your your crazy belief um, on anything. Uh, I, I'm, you know, Quentin is alive. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was in D.C. Uh, for for uh, for NYLF Law and CSI in tenth grade. It overlapped with Obama winning in 08. My black roommate cried tears of joy. It was very moving. Yeah, I mean, I was here too. It was um. It was uh, an interesting night. It was an interesting day. Um, I remember it very clearly. Uh, I remember that night and I remember going to work the next day. And um, yeah, I remember like just walking down the street and uh, every black person, it seemed like had a had an Obama shirt on. And I remember people being like, we did it. And everybody's like, yes, we did it. You know, we did it. Um, you know, it was, it was very, very important. And, and I also remember when Trump uh, was elected um, going, I was in Germany, but I worked with a, a black woman and I remember going to the bus stop and seeing her there and she's just crying at the bus stop. And, you know, and like, hey, I remember giving her a hug and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, you know, politics, like it, it affects real people and I, you know, um, and, and their lives day to day. And, you know, some people think it's just like it's as irrelevant as the your sports team winning like the World Series or something. It doesn't really change anything. It's just about your team winning. But I mean, these these things actually do have policy changes. And we saw huge policy changes with like with with Trump. And I mean, Jesus, I mean, abortion got banned in America, you know, and things like this. So it, it, it was um these things. Uh, I mean, yeah, like in, in, in this like symbolic sense it was very important for a, for a black guy to be president but you know these things 100%. also have like policy implications you know i mean we got obamacare you know and things like that because of obama so
and then Republicans uh, forced him to uh, tone it down, and then it was not as great as it could have been. And then they blamed him for that, even though that's what they right. wanted. Yeah. By the way, there's a guy in here, uh, Mr. J, who's very upset that you're telling the truth about the grifters. And uh, you can already tell this guy's an idiot because he's he's saying 1997 is the best. Things haven't been good since Gabergate for video games, even though 2023 is the best year we've ever had for video games. I don't know if you know this, and I, I, I hate that you can't play with us, mm. but 2023, Preston, yeah, we have probably more than 10, 10 out of 10 video games that came out this year. It's just an amazing year for gaming. Amazing year. <sighs> video I wish games you could play haven't with been us. good since Donkey Kong, man. <laughs> it's Donkey Kong. That was the best. Co that was the best video game of all time. And then they got. Then they got woke. Mario had to become a good guy, fucking rescuing princesses. Before Man. before you get off the Obama thing, pain causing samurai made a very good point. The thing that blows my mind about the election of Barack Obama was how quickly people forgot about George W. Bush. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think. George W. Bush wanted people to forget about George W. Bush. Um, it, Bush had become very unpopular. The wars became very unpopular. Um, you know, keep in mind that like Bush, Bush was kind of like, I mean, he, he, he barely squeaked in as president in the first place. He was a minority president. And then he was not very popular. And then 9-11 happened. And so there was a rally around the flag kind of thing for him that lasted a long time. <clears throat> and then, you know, he, he was barely reelected. And then, um, you know, he's just not, yeah, no one, no one really, uh, he, I mean, he did, he was doing some things that were kind of savvy for the future of the Republican party. So like he was very, um, Bush was very, Bush W was very, um, open on immigration and so it made it made kind of right wingers a lot of right wingers not like him. And then the war and the and the foreign interventionalism made a lot of uh, like isolationist far right wingers not like him too. And that which gets into like the evolution into Trump, you know. Um, but you know Bush was doing that he was because he wanted to appeal to the Hispanic community um, for the future of the Republican Party. Now the Republican Party has no future. So I mean, yeah. Locked out. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you, uh, let's, I guess let's continue with the uh, past blood and cheese. I can't believe it, it's taken me so long to get through. Um, here's, you know, Kristen Cole, of course, fighting people falling off horses, people fighting. Is that, that that's the, the twins fighting there. Yeah. That's gotta be like an entire episode. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that'll pop up. <laughs> that. Yeah, I, I I didn't say anything about it in my breakdown video because you can barely tell who he's fighting. Could be like a contingent of men. Yeah, I mean, not dead. Arik and Eric, it's it, a lot of space is given to them in in the text, so I feel like it's going to be an entire episode by itself. We shall see. <clears throat> and there's the the wimpiest, loserest loser dude in the world. This this was the whole trailer is them making it f seem like he's going to about to fight Rhaenyra when that's a fake out. Oh yeah. Like clip clip deep. Huh. Yeah, does Renier I mean Renier doesn't really doesn't fight anyone. So and then You gotta play this whole thing, by the way. You would not have gotten copyright claimed. I know, but I'm just, you know. Just, just make sure. This being this being safe. No, no, no worries. I uh I had to unlist the stream I did yesterday because uh, we I literally got copyright claimed by everybody but HBO. That's so funny. <laughs> um, if you're Robert <clears throat> and then Joffrey's hand, uh, what actions would you have taken to protect the realm, your king, and your head? What about Danny also? Um, <clears throat> let's let me think. Um, <clears throat> well, let me think. I think um, <clears throat> so. 
So I think the problem with Robert is that Robert thinks he has a lot of problems when he has none. <laughs> like there's no problems in the realm at all um, until he dies. You know, he thinks that he has all these problems like, oh, the, the Starks and the Lannisters are at each other's throats and stuff like this. It's just it's not really a problem. OK, it's just um, it's over these tiny little personal issues. And, um, I mean, you know, I'm trying to think like, like, like Robert, Robert acts like, like, uh, the, you know, he, he really needs Ned and, and that he really needs the Lannisters and all of these different people. He, he doesn't need any of them really. Like he, he should probably just cut ties with all of them and like make friends with house Hightower or something like completely switch, switch allegiances Try to make friends with the Dornish, you know, or something like that. I think, I think, um, realistically, like if I were John Aaron, would I have let Dorn fester for so many years independent without, without having like better relations with them? It seems a little weird, you know? Um, but I'm thinking of game, like Game of Thrones, like, Robert should have acted differently considering Stannis ran off and Lysa ran off. Those, those are some big red flags and he never dealt with those issues. He really thought like the issue, instead he went hunting and stuff and, and was thinking that he needed to handle stuff between the Starks and the Lannisters and totally ignored the Vale and, uh, and Dorne and, and, and really like man and Stannis, his brother and stuff like that. When uh, all those things needed to be handled, um, not attending, not attending uh, small council meetings and all sorts of things like that. Robert Robert made a real mistake, real mistake in that in that sense. <clears throat> um, now about Danny, like what would I? Do? So, I guess I would just have more relations, more marriages. More, more talks like to, to, to heal the, the, the kingdoms um, so that I wouldn't be so reliant on the Lannisters because it just felt like Robert was just reliant on Tywin when, when, when he didn't need to be. Um, now, let's see um, what, what I do with Danny. I mean, she has all these dragons like, I don't know. I think that uh, I don't think staying in Slaver's Bay is a bad idea. It's just it's very difficult to to win that to win them over. Um, like you know, do should, do I really want to like do I do I really think that uh, like I should reconquer Westeros? Like you know, is that is that the goal? I mean, I guess go you know sit, sitting place someplace safe and having her dragons you know, age is, is a, there's a pretty smart idea and Karth wasn't very safe and, uh, Slaver's Bay, it's got its problems, but it's probably safer than any other location. So like, I don't know. I think Danny's probably doing the best she could with her bad situation. Um, I think he meant, what would you do about Danny if you were in that, if you were the position of hand? Oh, position of hand. Um, honestly you know who had a really good idea and i wish they expanded on this was tywin tywin wanted to take apart danny's advisors one by one it worked with jora and mm -hmm. had he not died i'm sure it would have come to pass with barristan maybe or i just wish the, sh wish the show did this i wish tywin would have actually funded the sons of the harpy in the show that would have been great because the harpy really destroys Danny's advisor uh, of Barristan mm, in the show, of mm. course, and they really fuck with her whole stability yeah, of the yeah. marine. Yeah, but why? Why even think about it in a war sense? Like, what you know? Why is it? Why is it always like, oh, Danny needs to be dealt with? Like, imagine if, like, rather than um, trying to kill her off, like they had sent a diplomat and been like, well, we're we're uh, here, we're 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 here for reconciliation. 
you know. Because Tywin knows fairly well that the, his family will not be in power if Danny comes. Tywin was the last guy who really stuck a nail in that coffin of her dynasty, of her family's dynasty. Mm. She is going to come for retribution more so than anybody else. On the Lancers, more so than anybody else. The Baratheons are mostly fucked with already. She can just pick them off whenever. But the Lannisters are the ones that really fucked her over. No, I mean, like, now... From from Robert's position, like she's gone off to live with the with the with the with the Dothrakis. Like she is a world a world away and would probably die in the Dothraki Sea and stuff like that. You can't really predict predict the egg thing. So really, I mean Ned's Ned's opinion was do nothing. That this isn't a problem. And if she actually comes to Westeros, we'll deal with it then. Um and uh Based on the information that's there, Ned's kind of right. Like, like Daenerys's rise to power is unrealistic. Like, it's just out of nowhere. Like, you know, like, it, it takes a lot of insanity for that to happen, right? She, for, for, for the most part, like, first... <laughs> think about all the things that happened okay like she like gains control over her husband through sex tricks to make him fall in love with her then after he dies which cal's cal's do a lot she happens to have her eggs hatch which no one could see, see coming. Then she makes it to, she, she wanders through a desert and survives. And then she gets to Karth and they don't kill her for no reason. And then she's able to sail to Slaver's Bay where she's able to take an army like for stupid reasons. Like no, no one would ever like allow, like no one selling soldiers would allow that to happen. Like, like all of the things that need to be in place to like actually bring her home, uh, to bring them, you know, it, it's just it's it's just so you're, much. You're forgetting one thing. Um, this is a con. Well, you're talking you're talking about the books. I'm talking about the show because I think yeah. the show were, was on the right path and they fumbled the whole the whole situation. So this is actually a question that Joffrey asks Tywin about mm. Daenerys. What are we doing about the Targaryen girl yeah. in the east? We've had Targaryens invade before, or at least Blackfires kind of targaryens um and that we, they beat them back every time um yeah. daenerys wasn't it a unites threat. the realm right it unites the realm it to unites the these, realm it, to have these wars yeah exactly and the other thing is why would we fear the targaryen girl with three <laughs> sorry about that why would we feel the targaryen girl with three baby dragons because as far as we, we're concerned they won't grow up to be more than uh, the size of a dog and this yeah. is something that's also in the books as well. So there, we shouldn't fear Daenerys to, oh, oh, they grew. Oh, that's okay. Uh, well, let's send an assassin. Ah, we tried that. We could try that again. Or before we try that one more time, because she has two seasoned warriors at her side, let's pick them apart. Let's fund the harpies, have them kill Barristan, destabilize her kingdom, and she'll get rid of Jorah once she finds out that Jorah was a spy. Once she has no allies next to her, then we send an assassin. Because last time Jorah foiled the assassin, so yeah. But the, the problem with funding the harpies as an idea is that you're pushing her out. Like, say the harpies win and they and they expel her, and then then she's heading then she's heading back to Westeros. She has no ships. <clears throat> she has no allies. She has no army because they've been focusing mm -hmm. on the harpies, and they they're going to have to keep her safe throughout Slaver's Bay. And yeah, the harpies are she's, not going to. She's take... got three dragons, you know. So. <clears throat> So I don't know with, with with Game of Thrones. I almost think it's like, how can anyone see her as a threat at that point? I mean, Robert only does it because he has an irrational fear, but really, no one should really fear them. Um, Ironically, his rational fear turned out to be correct. To be correct, you're right. Yeah, you know, um, you're right. But it, you know, it's it's hard it's hard not to take Ned's position in a Game of Thrones where it's just like, well. Is she really gonna bring Dothraki across like the poison water? You know, come on, you know, is that really gonna happen? And you know, well, like does. I said, Tywin tried to nip this in the bud, and and he he died before he was able to 
continue on with the plan to disrupt her. But you're right. At that point, she had somewhat teenage dragons. They weren't as big as they were in the last season, but they were still fairly big. It's just, yeah, she has dragons, but she'd have to burn the whole city down. And I don't know. She need an army. Yeah, yeah. Even Aegon couldn't conquer without an army. Yeah. I mean, um, it's true. And, you know, she's... But I mean, they all knew her as beggar, beggar king at that point. Beggar king, beggar queen. Um, uh, random. How much thought is original now versus nineteen ninety three? Um, are we talking about like the like the nineteen ninety three is the genesis of like um, of a Game of Thrones? That's when like George first starts writing. Um. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if any if any thought is original back then. I mean, like George George is is always taking different ideas and and, and adapting them for for that. But um, like, is that is that what you think? That's what's being asked here, uh, Carmine. Like, how much thought is original now versus nineteen ninety three? I have no idea, Griffin. If you can just like type it in the yeah. chat. I'll just correct yourself because I know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> um, hi, Preston and Carmen. Love the vids. Do you think we'll get Jace, the absolute goat, at the Battle of the Gault in season two of Hot D? Um, so my original thought was that uh, that if I were going to plan plan things with a t- with a with a ten episode season, that it would be that the season would end with like Rhaenyra taking King's Landing. But now that it's an eight episode season and it does look like through the trailer that they're doing every little battle that the gullet would be, I think the battle, the gullet will be the season. that will be the last episode and like Jace dying in the last episode to mirror Luke dying in the last episode of season one. That's my, that's my guess. Some people think that like it's even gonna be like Rook's rest is gonna be like the end of the the the, the season, um, but I think I think Battle of the Gullet makes sense as the as the end of the season. Um, I don't know. What, what are you thinking, Carmine? If it was episode, if it was ten episodes, I'd agree with you. But now that it's eight, it seems like they want to stretch shit out. So episode eight seems like it, it'll be Rook's rest, and then I think episode th- uh, season three will be Battle of Gullet. I think Jace will s- remain a majority of the time in the North because we still need the Starks. Like people love so, the Starks. So we know from spy photos that there is a scene of them parading Melis's head through the streets of King's Landing. So we know that there's at least an episode after Rook's Rest. So that's seven, and then eight is the end. I mean that that you know that could be that could be it. Is that you could um, you could have Rook's Rest at seven, but I th- I would put Rook's Rest at at midpoint. You put Rook's Rest at four, and then you can have Gullet at at seven or at seven. That's at nonstop eight. battles, though. That's nonstop battles. Well, like say episode one. His readjustment. Episode two is blood and cheese, and then they're getting in. Then I guess we we have to deal with like now we know that they're doing the Riverland stuff, so we know that we're doing like the 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 battle of burning mill and stuff like that. So may and you know, and then after that, after burning burning mill, then we get like Dusk and Dale, Rook's Rest, and. Um, so I would have guessed I would have guessed Rick was rest at episode four, but I, I you know I don't. Think you may be right. I don't think it's because eight, you know. Well, um, because right here, uh, Dragon Demands actually sent me a, a DM the other day. He goes, uh, "Lord Lefford's actors in episode six and eight. Thus, if they're linking up with the Lefford army in episode six, that means the finale has the Battle of the Red Fork and the beginning of the Riverlands campaign." Huh. Hmm. That's really slow. uh yes the battle of the burning mill is in the tv show it's not condensed with the fall of harrenhal it was filmed by claire kilner which means it's in episode two we briefly see the brackens in the teaser uh they're probably just stretching this the fuck out to be honest so we'll probably have season three finale be rhaenyra 
taking King's Landing, and that's how that'll end. I can see that ending it like that. Because you and I initially thought, 10 episodes mm-hmm. a season, we should be done by season 4 or 5. No, yeah. these motherfuckers want to stretch it they the fuck out. Slow roll it now, it seems. S- slow roll it, 8 episodes, more of a budget to, to consolidate between episodes, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I don't mind this as long as we we don't get like a break between years. The, don't do that shit. Do not do, unless if we're gonna get a break between years, twenty twenty four, then twenty twenty five, Night of the Seven Kingdoms. I'd be cool with that. Yeah, but now now I don't know. Like it just seems such a nice thing that would be uh, um to have that mirror of Luke and Jace. But I guess they're they're you know maybe it'll be maybe it'll be early <clears throat> early season three. But I would have had Gullet be in it'd be the end of this season myself but i don't know they are really slow rolling it so we'll see we'll see um, you want it to be like a like a like poetry like rhyme it rhymes yeah do you think the show will extend the length of the war a season of hot d <clears throat> without a time skip will be weird and they'll need to age up this uh viserys and aegon um yeah i mean now it's i mean now that it seems like they're 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 going so slow um now we're looking at like what five seasons to get to the end of the war yeah that's what it sounds like yeah hbo doesn't have anything what do they got for the next couple of years what do they got yeah they don't have dick (laughs) right and then by that time i guess you know i mean it's gonna be weird without the without the because the show because the you know it's two years between seasons like the, the actors are gonna start getting old even though it's all in the same like year I feel like by the time uh, we get we get towards the end, all the actors who are who have been there, who have, they're already older enough. They're already old enough, so they're gonna look the same. <clears throat> um, okay, Dragon Demands is saying that the there there's two there's two right that there's a food riot in episode seven, and that there's a. A funeral riot too. So, jeez. And that there's yeah, blacks are sneaking in food for food drops. <clears throat> um. My long shot theory is that Alistair Thorne takes the role of Davos in the show as as a Targaryen loyalist when the truth of John's lineage comes out. <laughs> um. Let's see here. Oh, <clears throat> so this is the idea that in the book, John would come back to life and then Alistair Thorne would have a 180 about John. After, <clears throat> after finding out that R plus A equals J and then follow him as his advisor <clears throat> as John does battles in the North and then... Um, uh, and then Davos doesn't do anything, I guess, after that. Um, yeah, that's a real long shot. That's a real long shot. I mean, you, you forget that, like, Alistair Thorne is also just independently of hating John. He's also a dick. And I just felt like, even from the, from the sense of, like, would John keep him on as an advisor? Even if Alistair Thorne were suddenly... Like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, John. You're 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 a Targaryen. I need to follow you. Um, I, I I I just couldn't see John forgiving him. <laughs> but also, like proving John. This is the other thing: is if even if you if you find R plus R equals J, like some people are still gonna think John's a bastard, um, because of the polygamy thing. Like the polygamy thing is like an extra an extra barrier I mean, you can you know you can talk about like the 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 legalistic idea of like targaryen exceptionalism and exceptionalism and things like that but like not everyone's going to buy into that some people are still going to think that he's a bastard so i mean that's a it's a long i mean it's a funny idea a funny thought of like john leading like alistair thorne as as uh, john's hand <laughs> like <laughs> oh i don't know chances of that carmine it kind of yeah. lines up with my alistair thorn theory <laughs> oh yeah yeah that he's nettles everyone's nettles oh, yeah. everyone <laughs> everyone's nettles 
<coughs> Man, I'm really, my throat's really uh, going tonight. Mm. By the way, you ain't in Taiwan anymore, boy. <clears throat> you realize what time it is? Yeah, it's 11.30, man. No, nah, it's... How long are we going for? 30 more minutes? Yeah, something like that. Great. I'm oh, glad to hear it. I, 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 I didn't want to have to bother you for two more minutes. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. We're, we're just back, back. A lot of talk about... Black dwarfs, black elves. What's your opinion on Netherlands and Argentina electing right wing weirdos? It happens every once in a while. You know, things go back and forth. I don't I don't know too much about honestly uh um Dutch Argentinian politics recently, so I wish I could, I wish I could comment more. Um, yeah, I'd say wokeness from companies is a standpoint solely based on gaining more profit even down the road. They don't really care for minorities. I don't think, it, I don't think, I mean, a firm just cares about selling stuff. So, I mean, wokeness in the sense of like diversity and inclusion, if that's the definition of it. I, yes, I think a, a, a firm is only included, is like HBO, is only interested in making more uh <clears throat> and making more uh money and so they think yeah put put some black people in people are going to watch it and that's for the most part true people do watch shows with <laughs> with where, where where they're represented on screen i know you, people you sprinkle, them <laughs> sprinkle them in there sprinkle them in there it's like a couple of black did you notice how <laughs> did you hmm. notice how in the trailer in the the in the trailer where the um the high tower soldiers are marching and where the Rosby and Stokeworth soldiers are standing at attention, there's like they sprinkled like a couple of black actors in there in the soldiers' armor. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in there. It's in there. Go to the go high tower one. There it was. No, no, that's the Stokeworth one. Go I can't really tell who who's, who's it, you you can tell in the, the high tower one. Go back a little bit. Was it here? There it is. He's right there. See him? Let me... On on the on the right on the right side. Yeah, he's right there. My man, right there. You're right. It's oh, black. there's two. Oh, wow. Now it's really woke. Holy shit! See him right there, Preston. This one here, right over to the <laughs> left. Yeah, on the left and on the right, behind the guy holding the banner. I mean, you know, it's... What are the, the Valarians uh, doing there? <laughs> there's a lot of trade that comes into, into Earth ah! Town. You can, you can I love the mental that. gymnastics y'all do. It, it's clearly with that version. There's nothing wrong with them, but... It doesn't matter, you know. Dragon demands if you if you see his comment in the thing, he tries to do mental gymnastics as to why the Valarians are black. They're they're black because Ryan Condal, showrunner, said they're black because you know diversity. Nothing wrong with it, but it is what it is. Sure, I mean you can, but you know you can come up with this idea. The, the Valerians had a huge empire. It was all over. Yeah, the of place. course. Some of the houses That's... could have could have mixed with Summer Island or not Summer. I'll tell you what, Basil Skiles. I'll tell you yeah. what, if if George R. R. Martin comes out and he gives us a so spake Martin on the whole situation after the fact, then okay, I'll take it. But until then, diversity. Nothing wrong with it, but it is yeah, what it is. Fine. By the way, by the way, I, I've said this before on the on live stream, I'll say it again. When Destiny went on white liberals versus black conservatives, the black mm. conservative kid said how he hates pandering to black people. And then in the same fucking breath also says the reason he got into politics was because of Herman Cain. It's like, my man, you can't like, yeah, that's not the fuck yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Well, he's know. like, well, representation is not important. Clearly <laughs> it was for you. Right. Well, the, the people are so incredibly blind to these, this stuff, you know? It's like, like I said, like these people, you know, these people that are like, uh, um, uh, government, get, keep your, keep your hands off my social security. Like, you know, it's like, they're just not thinking about it. They're not, they're not doing any critical thinking on, on their own ideas. Um, was 1993 Fukuyama's end of history? Maybe. 
it was around that time. Uh, Francis Fukuyama wrote a book um, called The End of History, which um, in the 90s, let me think. End of History is a fascinating theory. Well, Fukuyama actually ended up, uh, he said End of History in 92, but nonetheless. Um, or he published it actually in, first as an article in 89. So Francis Fukuyama is a um, political scientist who came up with this idea that um, that we are, that the, and keep in mind, in the 90s, it seemed like this, that we have, we have hit an end state for um for political thought that like societies have globally accepted that capitalism um democracy equal rights women's rights multiculturalism um free trade like all of these things that were kind of like high in the 90s um that everybody ex kind of agreed that like this was the end state. This these were like good things, and even though that like <clears throat> a lot of countries hadn't gotten there yet, they would eventually. That there was like a consensus now. Um, and he he later is like, nah, I was wrong. <clears throat> but I don't necessarily actually think he was that wrong. Like. Um, you know, like we, we, we have some um, people have gone back on a lot of things, but at least with the, with with regards to like human rights and and equal rights and democracy, like we do kind of agree that this is the like that's those are the good things. All people should should, you know, go for that. Um, all societies should go for that. Um, you know, yeah, we see we see fascists appearing here and there and we see you know trump movements and stuff like that wanting to end democracy but still when you ask the average person on the street like is democracy the way to go they still they still say well yes but i mean we'll see maybe maybe maybe, maybe i'm wrong but like it's where the fukuyama himself rejected a theory that i'm not sure i reject um at least not yet but I don't know. Mm -mm. Um, wanted to do a fan meet and greet in Oklahoma City. <laughs> well, I don't know uh, what I would do in uh, Oklahoma City. Um, anything? Uh, anything going on? Anything going on in Oklahoma City? Oh, that's a long way to travel. But keep in mind that, like, if I were gonna do a trip, if I were gonna do a trip, I'd go to the fucking. I do the. I do the one of the library trips that Carmine wants me to do. Carmine wants me to go to the library. The Cushing Library. Yeah. Mm, go for it. Why not? You keep. You keep telling me you're like, dude, you should do one of those trips. I'm like, how what? am I gonna get a week away from my family, and like leave my <laughs> my wife with like two kids? To go like sit in the library. I keep forgetting that you don't have that boomer humor of "oh, I hate my wife and kids." You know what I'm talking about boomer humor. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. That, that's all it is. I keep forgetting you don't have that boomer humor. I'm, I'm sure you could, you know, take. I'm sure your wife would be like, "Yeah, really, you know, just gonna take a trip for work. Technically, work. You're getting paid." Mm, mm? Really hard. Be really hard. <laughs> Be tough. Not to mention, uh, as I, I, so for, for the audience who doesn't know this, I actually spoke to G Stuff privately. For those of you who don't recall, G Stuff was the guy who did the, the initial Cushing Library trip. I recently spoke to him uh, last week, and um, I much respect to, to G Stuff. Spoke to him. He's a very cool guy, but I feel like you know what you would be looking for more than G Stuff would because you know specifically the inner workings of George, all his stuff. Maybe G stuff does as well. And maybe he's, I mean, I read through G stuff stuff. He's pretty, he's pretty learned on. I mean, he knows like, like he's very thorough. Yeah. I mean, he, you so, know, so he... you feel as though you don't need to go because G stuff has gotten everything possible from the notes. No, from I, the... I look, I think any visit is going to find more. I think there, mm. there's, there's just a lot of stuff 
Um, I think there might be diminishing returns on each visit, on each visit. Um, uh, you know, and, and the amount of time one, one looks at everything, but, um, I don't know. I think I would be spending the time. I mean, I think didn't G Steph say like you spend the entire time just taking pictures of stuff and then, and then you yeah, even um, analyze it later. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. You, you do get a, a table to yourself. I need to, I do apologize. I have to give you the interview I did with him so you can yeah. listen over, over it. Yeah. Oh fuck. Tomorrow is the, um, don't say anything, but tomorrow's. Mm. So yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to have feel, a big. I feel podcast. like, yeah, I could do that. But, but th the thing is like, also like, um, all the other like ice and fire stuff, like whether it be live streams or, or like the fanfic and, and, and things like that, like all that would then get also delayed. Cause it's like, I'm like, I'm like going through, going through boxes and stuff. So it's like, mm. yes. Like the Cushing library, like it'd be, it'd be a really cool trip, but. According yeah. to G stuff, the, um, and we'll say this on the podcast too, when we cover the next G stuff stuff, according to G stuff, the Cushing library has, uh, ramped up the game of Thrones stuff since he last visit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you come to the Cushing library. Is, is a song of ice and fire cat seven a class of kings like are, are you at the cushing library right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, um bro come over we'll grab a beer come on dude yeah yeah it's uh but it, it, it's um yeah i mean it's just everything else would just go on would just would be would be um paused so i don't know it, it would be it would be very very interesting. I'm not saying it wouldn't be very very interesting, but also I think also like G Steph now has been a few times, so he's probably like knows how the how the system works as well. He like, he gave like me instructions day, how the would, system works. But I feel like that first day I'd be getting my bearings. I'd be like wasting my time on boxes that don't have anything in them. You know so. Well, like I said, according to him, he gave me instructions on exactly what to do. So when I give you that recording, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is, he's uh, a, <laughs> a sacrifice of fire cat seven at the Clash of Kings is a student at Texas A&M. See, you could go and go through those boxes too. <laughs> <laughs> or the cush, uh, the cush as they call it. Maybe, 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 you know, make it to the cush. Meet me at the Kush. Our library was the Reg, um, the Regenstein. Regenstein was known for inventing the window on envelopes. And so they designed the library to look like it had a bunch of windows from envelopes. Um, so Carmine, uh, what, what, what else, what else you got? What else you got? <laughs> uh, that's about it. What did you think of the trailer or the teaser trailer? Oh, look, it, it looked fucking great. It looked fucking great. It looked really fun. Looks like we're going to have a so, fun time. I want to send you a couple of things. So when I ended my breakdown video, I, I put this and this. Um, I'll send this to you on Facebook right now. Mm. You can bring this up to the discussion piece. So I, I put up a poll on my channel and I asked my community, uh, what did you guys, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, people voted and uh, let's, let's see one of them, if you don't mind. Oh, I see. Yes, you, okay. So you put up this, uh, this, this poll. Should mm. House of the Dragon continue and expand on the White Walker prophecy in season two? Yes, 33%. No, 60%. I'm still upset about the Marvels, 7%. Um, I'm surprised, right? Like it's Almost 8,000 votes, yeah. Isn't that... I thought people really liked the whole prophecy stuff with the dagger. Um, and I, I guess no. I guess people are like, no, it's stupid. Uh, I, I disagree. I think it's a really cool way to bring that into the show, to bring that into like way back when. But uh, 
Should they let it go? They brought it here. Okay, cool. Should they let it go? We'll see how well if it bring if it gets brought up in season two, we'll see how well it does. My idea okay. is Jace goes, he finds out about it. He wants to tell his mom and uh, he wants to tell Rainier about it, his mom, and he dies at the gullet before he gets to say anything, thus adding more to the tragedy. Hmm. Ed Walters says that the Marvels was the best movie of the year, to be honest. Hard disagree. You, I know for a fact you would have a problem with a lot of it. You are the, you you still have a problem with the fact that the fandom still loves Tyrion despite the fact that he's a rapist and a psychopath, and no one ever brings it up. You would hate the fact that Captain Marvel essentially made the worst moves possible, and no one says anything to her or, or holds her feet to the fire over her decisions after the first Captain Marvel film, because she goes back yeah. to that planet and she kills the supercomputer. And I guess the Kree are so stupid that without a supercomputer telling them what to do, they go into a big civil war and they use up all their resources or whatever. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's a good move because her doing that, it means the Kree had to sue for peace with the the Nova Corps. So, uh, yeah, but lucky. she made... It sounds lucky to me. It sounds lucky, but she made all these decisions without really consulting government officials on earth because she's technically still a member of earth and earth's mightiest heroes kind of it's weird and monica rambeau only cares that she didn't come back and say hi it's, it's like a whole, when you watch it you'll see what i mean yeah yeah um i mean i read a criticism of it of of like okay the 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 setup of the three of the three characters is an interesting theme because you've got monica you got rambo who should be very angry at um at carol and hater and then you have um you have ms marvel who loves and idolizes carol right and that that would be like an interesting story going forward is that that you know captain marvel's got one character that hates her and one character that loves her too much and then she has to like deal and balance with those with that with those relationships and that that which that should drive the movie and that wasn't really what drove the movie you know like the other thing that could have happened was that kamala who idolizes carol realizes that carol is not perfect and over the course of the movie loses like has is disillusioned with the idea of her being this like hero that doesn't happen Oh yeah, you know, you know that would have been a really cool. So at the beginning of the movie, Monica Rambo hates her, and Kamala Khan loves her, and then at the end of the movie they switch. Because Monica Rambo is an adult, she understands that Carol had to make the hard choices, and she understands and sympathizes with that. But Kamala's a kid; like you're supposed to be the hero, and here you are making dumbass decisions, and it's affecting the Earth now. Like, yeah, it should. Like, that's would have been really interesting. That would have been really an interesting evolution of the character to have Monica Rambo and Kamala Khan, who mirror each other, then take each other's positions at the end of the movie. And Kamala right. Khan they didn't do- ends the story hating. Uh, Captain Marvel, while 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 Rambo has like come come to come to love her again. Oh man! And, and it doesn't suck that this is on par. The villain is on par with like Thor two, the Dark World's villain Malekith. I right, think his name was. Yeah, yeah. It's forgettable. So Which you're saying you're stuck, saying cause... we should rewrite the next. We should we should have no. We should not. No. We should have written it. We should have. <laughs> we. I hope you're yeah, being royal. We. You and me. I touch like that. Marvels. You and me. <laughs> Don't you think that like our Marvels fanfic would be the best? <laughs> no. I don't know anything about the Marvels. I don't know anything about anything. I don't know anything comics. That's all Ness. Get him in here. It's all Ness, mm-hmm. my boy. It's true. I don't know anything about Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I read Quasar, but um, if you could pick someone in the story to be. Aries the second's bastard. Um, who would it be? Who uh, who would be interesting? Roughly working out. Um, uh, has to be between two fifty seven and uh, two seventy five. You mean besides Tyrion? <laughs> you mean besides Jamie? <laughs> um. Who would who would Ares be? Uh, okay, um, Ashara Dane's 
daughter. Um, all right, who could Ares be? It's just, unfortunately, we don't have that many female characters. And so like, who would Ares be banging? And then, and then who would, uh, who would appear? Um, I'm trying to think who would be an interesting bastard if it's revealed in the end. Um, Cal Drogo. <laughs> Carmine, who could be who could be Ares's bastard? Ooh, a little finger, though I've seen like where he he's a, a Rain, a member of House Rain, but that doesn't make any sense because mm. we have it's very well documented where he's come from. Varys, maybe. Uh, doesn't vary Varys? Um, he though already is like advising for for Ares during during, mm. uh, during that time. Uh, who, who I, I don't know, Corn Half Hand. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Uh, Corn, Corn Half Hand is Aries. This is like random, random theory generator. Corn Half Hand is Aries' bastard. Wait, no. Ne- uh, Jeremy's got a great theory. It's Nettles. Nettles is Aries' is... <laughs> The thing is, okay, Aries can only get it up though when he like, when he like looks at fire and like, uh, like executes people, right? I guess. Um, unless unless it's Joanna Lannister, then he then he like then he can get it up, because she's she's just so she's just on fire. <laughs> uh, the ship guy is Arius's bastard. Forgot his name, Morio. Morio, the guy who like sails Catalan to uh to, oh. to, to King's Landing. Before I forget, oh my god, the fucking uh, oh, okay, so Dark Star, Dark Star, that's the that'd be the that'd be the most interesting, right? So, so okay, Arrain hold waters. on, you're, you're gonna waters. love this. Hold on, you're gonna love this. One second, put so I asked people what the next topic of the podcast should be. You're gonna love this one mm. here. There's some good ideas here from people. Put this up real quick if you don't mind. Okay. You're gonna love this. There's one I on here that you just reminded me of. Um, what? Who is who is Torment? He knows too much, just to be able... put 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 it up on screen if you don't mind. Okay, okay, okay. These are, these are all uh... okay. Um, not gonna lie, I lost interest in Game of Thrones a few years ago, but I love listening <laughs> to your general banter. I would like to hear. Preston's full and full and filtered thoughts on why Return of the Jedi is a terrible movie. Unfiltered, yes. The um that 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 I could go on forever about that. I like the trivia game here. You read that one. Yeah. Trivia game, but you and Trey make one each, and one where Preston gets more questions wrong. Wins. So what he means is like me and Trey give you a quiz and yeah. ten quiz. If you get five wrong on mine but six wrong on his, he wins. So it's 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 a contest of who can stump you, right? But is it gonna be like how many times was words was words or wind used in in a storm of swords? Ah, uh, I would have to I would have to like no that that would be so awful that would be so douchey. More Game of Thrones season eight analysis, please, bro. Who the f- it's over? Let it go. Where's <laughs> Preston? A Varys scheming. You have a breakdown of Varys scheming? I don't think I have done a, var- uh, a various one. You know, years ago, I'd 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 said I was gonna do like a very like um, Illyrio master plan video, and then I ended up doing, um, I ended up doing uh, the 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 politics of wars and war and dragons series instead on on like on Aegon because I, I I just couldn't find enough really on Aegon. So, um, but yeah, I mean. It, the the Illyrio, the Illyrio Varys master plan, um, which Where's that coming? Well, and then who is Torment? Um, in all honesty, like I don't think George knows what Illyrio's master plan is, and I think that's why like he makes even a, a meta joke about it in in A Dance with Dragons, where he's like, um, where they're like, oh, this guy's whose plan changes at the drop of a hat. You know, I think we, I think like we can retroactively come up with a cool thing, but, um, but I don't know if George actually knows. Um, he's just making it up as he goes along, but you know, like the, uh, you know, this idea of it, like 
you know, he wanted to send Danny to a shy to, uh, to, um, get her out of the way to get the Dothraki out of the way so that, that the, the, the free cities were more willing to support Aegon because they, they could free their armies up and stuff like that. Um, and that someone in a shy asked for her, you know, that was like my original like idea about the Illyrio master plan. But in the end, like having read enough, I'm just like, George doesn't fucking know. George doesn't have a master plan about it. He's just making it up as he wants. It goes along. Um, I just assume Varys was bricking until Griff gets there. Um, what's bricking mean, Carmine? I don't know. These G's, G, these Gen Z's fucking new crap every other day. Um, Australian slang for falsification of evidence. No, it, what it probably means is it, it's probably like a term for like what happens to a video game console when it bricks or, or a computer when it bricks, you do something wrong and it like doesn't turn on or whatever the fuck. It, it probably mm -hmm. means waiting. It's probably what it means. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think that's like the idea is generally speaking that he's trying to create chaos um, to screw things up until Aegon arrives. But then it's like, well, what are you doing with it? What, what were you doing with the dragon eggs and Daenerys? Like, why would you give dragon eggs to Daenerys? Dragon eggs that can be used to buy lots of sell swords, you know? Um, oh, oh, he goes, I made it up. Oh, fuck you. I'm assuming bricking. <laughs> I'm assuming bricking means like, you know, stacking bricks, setting everything up. I guess I'm assuming that's what it is. Wrecking shit up, stonewalling. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, I think what? the original army was taking Drogo, his, his army east. I mean, there's definitely some some lines in there, you know, like him claiming that he's gonna like him claiming that he's gonna fight the milkmen, and the milkmen actually like the next book in being Carthine is an interesting idea, um, though he does call Jorah a milkman too. So it's so milkman does refer to any 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 whitey any whitey. Click on that. Click on Marcus. Where is the line between millennial and Gen Z? I'll tell you this right now, buddy. Uh, up right there. I'll tell you this right now. No, no. Oh, here. Below that guy. Is uh, if you didn't grow up with VHS tapes, you're a Gen Z. That's that's exactly where it is. If you don't remember Blockbuster, Gen Z. It's exactly that's where cool. it is. Yeah. Um, breaking is when you don't you don't make a a three point shot in basketball. That's true. Well, what do you think about bricking is like um, when it hits the back of the rim? Is that a brick? And it goes, you know, when the ball hits the back of the rim, it just flies out. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, I'm Gen Z and I still own VHS tapes. No, you don't. Well, own I mean, owning a few versus like watching them because you don't have a v VHS player anymore. <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on. Oh my god. Hey, get down. No, get, get down, down. Get down. Get down. Cat is get on down. somewhere she should not be. Get down. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, complain. Go ahead. Um, I have watched the Rick and Morty episodes of Evil Morty. I, uh, but is there another one now? With where, where? Yeah, there's. They finally finished. It, it was Evil Morty comes back and uh, he teams up with Rick to fight Evil Ultimate Rick. Right. I remember it's Evil Ultimate Rick, but then Evil Evil Morty makes it to like a mirror universe, right? He he makes it past the central curve where it's basically, um, it's a it's a another set of multiverse universes where rick is not the smartest person and he wanted to go there but he did get there but for some reason he comes back and helps i forgot why i, I watched the episode a while ago it was it was all right um yeah. apparently there's like this evil main rick who killed our rick's wife right. for whatever reason we finally get a resolution of that eh. this season has been very mid i'm gonna be very real with you it's been very mid do you think i mean are, are people still crazy about Rick and Morty, or is it? Do you think it's like past in the zeitgeist? 
I think it's gone down in popularity a little bit. Uh, a lot of the episodes just, a lot of the episodes are just really like, what are what's Rick gonna turn himself into this time, or what weird? There are some really funny moments and clips. Mm. Um, did you see the one where? <clears throat> We see the one where there's a clip from one of the episodes where this is great, where Rick gives Morty a gun, a gun hmm. to kill gorillas. <laughs> so a bully, a bully tries to bully Morty. <laughs> yeah, Rick gives Morty a gun to kill gorillas. So if a bully tries to <laughs> tries to no, he gives a, a gun called the gorilla gun, and <laughs> so Morty uses the gun on a on a bully, and it hurts him very badly. So Morty goes to the principal's office and he's crying. I thought it would turn him into gorilla. And Rick's like, a, a gorilla bully? Why is that better? <laughs> and then he gives him a, an actual gun. And, he, and Morty's like, is this what I think it is? Yep, it's a gun. Have fun. And then he's on a date with Jessica. And a man tries to stick him up with a gun. So Morty takes out his gun and fires. But it doesn't shoot a bullet. It shoots a slime thing that transforms into Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> I, just, I know it's a, for those of you who yeah, have no idea what yeah. I'm talking about. It's the newest episode. It's just it's fucking. It's, yeah, yeah, I mean, I I remember watching like one of the last one of the last uh, seasons, and it was okay, but I don't know. It just didn't, didn't didn't. I don't know. I mean, I think it's any anything you 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 get you get tired of the same thing over and over. You know, so <sighs> they they ran out of really cool ideas before. It was like really cool episodes, like Vat of Acid episode was amazing. Mm-hmm. More of that, but they won't do Vat of Acid episodes. They'll do like two crows. That was a mm. stupid shtick. That was so dumb. The two crows stuff, yeah. super yeah. dumb. I'm sure, you laughed at the time. <laughs> no, I didn't. Even at the time. <laughs> All right. Um. So. I guess, uh, thank you, Carmine. I'm, I'm going to uh, sign off. It's midnight now and, mm-hmm. uh, I will, uh, uh, we, we, we've got, we've got some, uh, a lot of crazy things coming, coming in the future. I promise. I, I have another fucking, uh, I have another overanalyzing coming this week. So I, mm. I I'm almost done. We got to get back on, oh Jesus Christ. We got to get back to fire and blood. We got to finish that. That's a, <laughs> I know. I gotta... we'll, we'll see we'll see man i forget where we left it. off of it but rainier just took king's landing uh we'll see if i catch up with uh with uh we can't we can't let you catch up we can't it'll take a long time for me to catch up with over analyzing to that point <laughs> i'm just trying to get to at least at least get to the point where like i've caught up with the show before the second season starts oh i think it'll, it'll... yeah i think it'll that's the first chapter of fire and Bl- of the Rainier stuff for fire and blood, right? The, pro- well, the problem is, is that some, po- some stuff is out of order. So I, I've got to go oh. through blood and cheese before I get to uh, storm's end. No, you know, it's blood and cheese after storm's end, right? Um, then what am I thinking? What, what was out of order? I don't some, remember. There's, some, what's there's out of something order. with the show that went out of order. I forgot. I know. I know that episode eight was essentially like one sentence. Yeah, yeah. Paragraph. Yeah. Well, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. All right, man. I will uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks everyone for being with me, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.